understand there is a large number of people outside still who are trying to work their way in. So as we progress, as people have spoken, if you wouldn't mind stepping out to allow room for others to come in, it would be appreciated. I'll call this meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Bryant? Would everyone please stand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brian. Are there any changes or discussion on the agenda tonight? It's a pretty short agenda. If not, can we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Okay. Second. Can't hear you. Can you hear this? Yes. Okay. We'll have to make sure that the mics are on for anybody who speaks and facing you. <laughs> Pretend you're a rock star. Look there you go. Get right up there. Okay. Um, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Second. We'll vote to approve the agenda. All in favor? The agenda is approved. Aye. Kurt. Announcements. I do have an announcement tonight. I was asked by several members of the Commission to discuss the proposal before you tonight. As I previously stated, this is not an unconstitutional communist power grab. This is in accordance with Idaho Constitution, Article 18, Section 12, and Idaho Code, Title 31, Chapters 50 through 58 inclusive. In spite of comments that have been made, this Commission has been open all along. Both the Idaho Constitution and the Idaho Statutes are publicly available to anyone. Copies of the pertinent chapters of the Idaho Code were presented to members and alternates of this commission at the end of April. At one of our first meetings, an attorney, Brian Cleary, explained the statutes for the commission. Someone who is late to the party has recently stated the commission is considering seven optional forms of government. The commission executive form, the commission manager form, the three-member board of commissioners, the five-member board of commissioners, the seven-member Board of Commissioners, a consolidation of offices among counties, and a charter form of county government. These are the optional forms provided in Idaho Code, Title 31, Chapters 50 through 58. But the recommendation before you tonight focuses on one optional form, the Commission Manager Form under Idaho Code, Title 31, Chapter 53. The published recommendation gives the detailed references to the Idaho Code. I won't repeat them now. Suffice it to say, the recommendation is for the Board of County Commissioners, who are currently statutorily responsible for the administration of an organization of approximately 300 employees, as well as policy and legislation, to transfer the statutory responsibility for administration to an administrator and retain the responsibility for policy and legislation. The administrator is being targeted, yet the clerk, the assessor, the treasurer, the coroner, the prosecuting attorney, and the sheriff are all administrators of their respective departments. This is simply copying the departmental form of those six long-term operations. By streamlining the operation to match the format of the other departments, the administrator can make decisions the same way the sheriff and the, uh, and the bureaucracy will actually be reduced. The concern that the administrator is not elected is a misdirection, since an incompetent elected official will remain in office for four years, while an incompetent administrator can be removed and replaced immediately. The administrator is actually more responsive to the voters of Kootenai County than the elected officials since the administrator serves at the pleasure of the elected county commissioners. In addition to the county manager, the recommendation is that the Board of County Commissioners be increased to five commissioners and that all six other elected officials remain elected as they are currently. This will result in an increase from nine to 11 elected officials. Concerns that the title of Chief Budgetary Officer transferred from the Office of the County Clerk to the county manager demonstrate a lack of understanding of the process. The budgetary officer does not create the budget, but compiles the budget from the submissions from the department heads. A qualified county manager would not make the mistake of informing the public that the budget was being prepared as a zero-based budget, in spite of the fact that the budget was actually a baseline budget, the same as in previous years. This basic misunderstanding of budgets demonstrates the weakness of the current situation. As far as the issue of increased cost of government, this is not within our power to recommend. However, anywhere that this form of government has been instituted, the county commissioner's pay is reduced dramatically. In many cases, benefits are reduced or eliminated. 
The savings from the reduction in the cost of the county commissioners greatly exceeds the cost of the county manager, resulting in a total reduction in the cost of government. All candidates for county commissioner should be judged on their answer to this question. If the voters choose to have a county manager, will you reduce the pay of the county commissioners to $1,500 a month or less with an elimination of all benefits not mandated by the state? This is how we can actually reduce the cost of county government and get true public servants, not professional politicians attracted to the easy money and benefits of government. Finally, we are discussing a recommendation from this commission to the Board of County Commissioners. The board will decide to place this recommendation on the ballot for next November. The voters, we the people, will decide what form of county government we want, not this commission, not the Board of County Commissioners. Anyone who is afraid to present this recommendation to, recommendation to we the people is the true enemy of this republic. This is an announcement, sir. A quick review. A quick review. Speakers will have three minutes. A lighting system will be in operation. When the light changes from green to yellow, start wrapping up. When the light turns to red, close your presentation. If a speaker continue, refuses to cooperate, the microphone will be cut. This is your chance to address this commission. I hope the audience will please refrain from emotional demonstrations since they will delay the opportunity for others to speak to the commission and will reflect poorly on the demonstrators and their message. I have been told the microphone at the podium is not working properly. Therefore, there is, therefore it has been moved out of the way and there is a temporary microphone sitting on the podium. Please speak into the temporary microphone. Do not try to get the other microphone set up. Thank you. She said, that microphone is not as directional as the other types of microphones. It will pick up the sound. You don't have to speak directly into it. You don't have to pick it up to hold and speak into it. We have no reports, old business. We will move straight into the public hearing. We'll take public comments. The first comment will be from Deborah Rose of Athol. Go ahead and do it anyway, Deb. There we go. There you go. Deborah Rose, Dove Haven Lane and Athol. Good evening. Let me start by saying I have watched every single minute of your commission meetings, so I clearly understand that Idaho's Constitution allows for your recommendations to go before the voters for consideration. I would like to recognize those of you who are able to put fear and partisan politics aside in order for you to come up with your well thought out, well researched recommendation. What has been taking place at NIC is a perfect example of what happens when partisan politics rules the roost and poorly informed voters elect undeserving candidates for office. This type of status brings merit to having row officials hired. However, I understand why you decided to recommend our six row officials be elected rather than hired. Our county will surely benefit from the recommendation you are presenting to the county commissioners who are tasked with the decision to send your recommendation to the voters. I anticipate they will do so, committed to letting the voters decide which form of government our county will operate under. Considering the troubling and ill-mannered conduct of your early audience attendees, some of those you interviewed and certain members of this commission and their dishonesty, the five of you who voted to put these recommendation, this recommendation to the voters deserve to be commended. I will admit the lack of decorum and civility that took place during your meetings caused me to question whether the judgment of our county voters overall can be trusted. I've seen... I've seen so much false information being spread and believed on social media. 
I hope there are plans to provide voters accurate information regarding your recommendation. I can only hope the number of, uh, the number of wise and thoughtful voters will outnumber the poorly informed, drama-laden, and fear-driven voters, and your wise recommendation will be approved. In closing, some of you have clearly worked very hard and have shown an obvious commitment to moving our county into a new era of more effective governance. Thank you for your commitment to our community's success and well-being. You know, I'm prepared to stay here all night. If you guys want to keep this up, you can just lengthen the time. Let's do it. Next speaker. I'm not sure about this handwriting. Is it Robert Whitehead? As I see it, the commission formed by the county commissioners as another effort to streamline Kootenai County government has been tried before and failed. Why? Because the people caught on to what was going on. The commission would have been better served had it been charged to examine commissioners' duties and responsibilities, efficiency, productivity, and accountability. But evidently, that isn't what some of the commissioners are looking for. So what are some of the issues and problems here? First, with regard to looking at alternative forms of government, the commission in itself is not an unbiased in, in entity. As I understand, each commissioner selected members for the commission, and that in itself makes it biased. Second, is the option of changing from three to five commissioners necessary? No. With a salary and benefits approaching $100,000, the job involves more than a 40-hour week. You work until you get the job done. You should have known that from the beginning. Yes. Better to update county operating systems, improve efficiency, and serve as statesmen rather than work as politicians. Function as a well-oiled business, not, as is becoming more common, government bureaucracy and inefficiency. And if the three commissioners are efficient, productive, and accountable, then there isn't a need for five commissioners or to hire a high salary manager, especially since we, the people, would have no say in who that manager is and what he or she does. Third, even suggesting a change for electing government officials, such as the sheriff, prosecutor, prosecuting attorney, coroner, and others, as commissioner appointments reeks of a grab for power and control. That's taking government away from we the people, and we, uh, that's taking government away from we the people. That's more the focus of politicians and statesmen, and we won't allow that. We don't need to streamline county government. I believe it's a guise for more power and control. We need statesmen, not politicians. And if you don't want to be a statesman, then you shouldn't be doing a job. And if anyone doesn't know the difference between a politician and a statesman, then I encourage you all to look it up. Thank you. I uh, believe the name is John Tapero. John? Hi, thank you. Hi, my name is John Tapero, and I uh, live in uh, Hayden. Uh, thank you for your time and labor uh, in serving uh, on this commission. Our current commission form of government is one of the oldest forms of county government with roots going back to colonial Pennsylvania. While it's not perfect, it stood the test of time, and it works well. But once again, the citizens will be asked to ditch this and fundamentally transform Kootenai County into a commission manager form of government. The last time this proposal came up for a vote, it was soundly rejected. Why? The voters are not stupid. 
They recognize a turd when they see and smell one. <laughs> Pardon me for being uh, direct, but the commissioner-manager form of government is one big steaming pile for several reasons. First, it grows government, creating another level of bureaucracy. This new level is appointed and unaccountable to citizens. It gives county commissioners a convenient scapegoat. It allows them to pass the buck and pass the blame to an appointed employee for their unpopular shenanigans when questioned by concerned citizens. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith. It was the county manager. She determined this is the best course of action moving forward, but I'll be sure to pass on your sentiments the next time I meet with her. It also politicizes the manager position. All you have to do is look at feckless police chiefs in cities like Portland. They are nothing more than appointed politicians serving the interests of those who keep them in that position. Finally, managers are usually career gypsies, bureaucrats who do not live here nor understand local issues until the moment they are hired. And they often leave as soon as a better paying gig comes along leaving the county in a lurch. They're not here to serve the community. To them, it's just a job, and only until something better comes along. This is why the voters rejected it. But this giant turd now looks like it's going to be repackaged by those who cannot take no for an answer. This time, oh, let's remove the, prop the proposal to transition the sheriff and other elected positions to appointed positions. Oh, that'll make it a smaller change and more palatable for the voters. Well, a smaller turd is still a turd and it still stinks. <laughs> Stop this nonsense. It won't fool the voters. Remove the commission manager recommendation from your final report. Thanks for your consideration. Kenny Moore. Good evening, Commission. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And uh, thank you for your service over the past six months. I noticed that uh, possibly your opinions haven't changed since you started uh, to a great degree. It seems like it's uh, the ratio here is about uh, dependent upon who appointed them into the study group that you're a, you're a member of, and uh, have some problems with that. This is not a new process that's been coming over the county. It's been voted on formally on the ballot here before in context, and it didn't work then. It's never worked really in areas that have tried this same form of government. Uh, it comes right out of the UN Agenda 2010, 2020, 2021, 2030, and now in 2040. Unfortunately, our planning commissions have picked up that same rhetoric, and they're using it and have been using it in our county and in our cities in this, in this county thus far, and it is making a heck of an impact on our county. It's not a progressive thing. It isn't good. It's a degeneration, and it gets back into uh, uh, going into socialism. So... I stand against that. I'd like to go on the record saying that, and I'm very much against that. We want to get everything that has to do with UN agendas out of this form of government. When people vote, they have a voice. When they don't vote, they don't. Managers never come through. Managers escape the responsibility and do not bear the consequences. So I stand very much against that. Thank you. Not even sure how to call this next one. Mike from Rathdrum. First off, the uh, notion that I need to tell you my name and where I live to speak at a public meeting is deplorable. The fact that the public is expected to give you all of their personal details to talk at this commission is abhorrent. It's a public meeting. Again, you've taken a page out of the COVID handbook, which is a room seated and slated for 150 people has 90 chairs set up in it. You all should fix the problems that you can fix. And before you tell me you're going to fix higher problems, 
The, the bias in this committee is disgusting from the beginning. You, Chairman, opened up with your announcements and used it as a bully pulpit that no one can interrupt you on to make statements about things that are your opinions. You should recuse yourself for that alone. Let's move on to the next problem we have with before this meeting started. Mrs. Deb Rose was allowed in the room previous to any other persons, then given the first position to speak while the rest of us stood locked out of the room. If this doesn't show bias, I don't know what does. How do you allow a person in a public comment section into a meeting prior to everybody else and then lock the door and everybody say, wait your turn, and then take them out of order? This is unacceptable. Your behavior needs to be accounted for, Mr. Chairman. And you can smirk and squint your eyes at me sideways and wonder all these things, but from the get-go, Miss Rose was also not held to your red light, green light standard. The lights were not on for her. They're on for me and everybody else has been up so far. This bias is disgusting. You, chairperson, should have noticed if it was on or off and it was a failure of another person. You're accountable as the chairperson to this whole entire committee and to the public whom you claim to be representing. This meeting hasn't even started yet, and we've run into reasons why you should recuse yourself from that seat, why you should withdraw your recommendation, because your bias is screaming through. The position of an appointed county manager, which is really why we're all here, let's be honest. An appointed person, an appointed person has no accountability to the people. You all who are appointed to this committee get to go home and don't bear the burden of the implementation or if we don't implement it. You don't bear that burden. You bear the burden of seeing if this is what the people want. And at every meeting, from its inception, which I have been at, the people did not want this discussion even taking place. They told you this. You ignored them, thus showing your bias, that as a commission being put together by, 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 our, by our county commissioners, that there was going to be bias and not listening to what the people had wanted done. That in and of itself is abhorrent. That when you hear people whom you should be accountable to as a commission who appointed you ignores the voice of the people to offer change that the people by their voice and by their showing up to these meetings, which is what this meeting is for. When this room is limited to 45 people, it was abhorrent that it was done in that manner. There was no county, no state mandate to reduce the, pop the, the number of persons in this room. This is just the exact problem we want to avoid. This commission was appointed with no accountability. And here you sit, after being told time and time again, this is not something that our county would like to see done. The voters have shown up and used their voice to save the taxpayers the pain and suffering and the inconvenience of having to come to these meetings, taking time away from our families, our businesses, our livelihoods, to be here to tell you again, we did not want this. The fact that you call us the terrorists, inferencing that we are terrorists, calling us the socialists, calling us these horrible names, you used your time in your announcement section to name call those that oppose you is, oppose you is abhorrent. You should recuse yourself from this committee for that alone. Any committee members? Any committee member that did not stand against and oppose his statements, you should be held to the same, same standard. Regardless of where you stand, when the chairperson out of line, it is the duty of the committee to rein him back in and to censure him for his comments. This did not take place. This disappoints me. But again, there's no one you're accountable to when you walk away from this at the end of the day. And that, my friends, is the exact reason an appointed county position that you're discussing bringing in is so abhorrent, because no one's accountable. This committee was ignored by the, ignored the public from the very onset, just like the new position you'd like to generate as appointed will do. Our elected officials ignore the people, and we will, we will bring them out of the office when it comes time for that by the appointed method. You are true and correct in stating that it takes longer to get the bureaucrat elected out than it does the appointee. But the fact is, you can get that root out. You can take that out by the roots and get that weed out of the problem. So my friends, I appreciate your time. I completely do not respect someone that does not respect the population they're claimed to represent. Right. Yeah. Dave, you should step down this instant. We love you, but you're up. It doesn't matter. They only hold it for people they don't like. <laughs> That's right.
Jonathan, they've asked if the microphone at the podium can be increased volume. She can leave because she's yeah, done speaking. You speak. You're supposed to leave. That's what you said the first time. I did. Okay. And I don't think all the other speakers have left either. So Nobody there's no speak. mandate that they leave. I've asked the people after they speak leave to make room. I believe the next name is, next name is Leo Wigan. Yes. Wigan. Sorry. Yes. Thank you for your time. I want to say I'm proud that I'm a former Whitman County Commissioner. I served 12 years. They tried the same thing in Whitman County in 95. The RCW said, you go out and get 800 signatures and bring it to the commissioners and we'll put it on the ballot. They brought 150 names in. They said, the RCW said, you bring it in 800 so we, we wouldn't put it on the ballot. Uh, I don't have the notes like her and these other guys, so bear with me. Uh, March 9th, March 9th, Bill, uh, Bill Brooks proposed this issue and he handed it to Chris Filios. Chris Filios handed it to his attorney and then on March 19th, the attorney came back and they voted on the on you guys to do this, and the vote was two to one, and Leslie Duncan voted against it. Uh, I supported Bill for county commissioners in 220. He told me, if you ever have something to say about my job, then tell me. And I, and, and on the first of this is making a lot of noise for me. Okay. So on the 1st of April, Bill Brooks was a speaker at the Women's Republican Party. He would not talk about your organization. He told us that he had 150 supporters for what you guys are doing. Where are those 150 supporters? I've only heard one. I follow this on, online. And where are the 150 supporters that Bill Brooks has? And by the way, I'm, I want to invite Bill Brooks and Chris Filios to get out of their house, drive down here tonight as a citizen, just like the rest of us, and testify for three minutes. Amen. Okay. Uh, oh, this. I propose that Bill, Bill Brooks and Chris Filios and the six appointed people of Bill Brooks and Chris Filios go out and get a thousand signatures on a petition and then bring it to the county commissioners. Uh, okay, I called the Idaho Association of Counties. I asked them, how many counties have this former governor? There's zero. So I'd like to have you call them. The number is 208 345 9176. Where where are the Bill and and uh, Chris supporters in the audience? The only ones I see in the audience is Leslie Duncan. Uh, I hope the press prints how many people vote yes for this and how many people vote no for this, and including the last meeting, and publish it in tomorrow morning's paper. Uh, I want, let's see, excuse me. Uh, I am asking, I am asking, this is for the majority of citizens on the study commission to support this. I'm asking the study commission to give us their three minutes of their yes vote for, and testify just like me and the rest of us. So I'm asking you guys to stand here for three minutes and tell us if you want this, yes or no. Uh, 
And why? I get and why, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time. I'm against this proposal. Call the Idaho Association of Counties and they'll tell you there are zero counties that have this. Thank you. Marcy Haggett. It's actually Marcy Hoggett, and I live in Hayden. I have been a resident of Idaho for almost three years, and let me tell you, I am so thankful to be a resident of Kootenai County, but I don't want to see the blue take over. I came from a blue state, and it's, it's very sad. What I see lacking in this is accountability in this proposal that's being presented to the people. And I can't stand back anymore and not let my voice be heard. In Hebrews, and I know I'm quoting the Bible, chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. So even though we might think we get away with things in our little proposals and how we word all of these things, we're not getting away with anything. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. I was in business as a manager for 44 years, and I see that if a commission manager is appointed, the position has power, but not accountability. The chance for embezzlement is great, and if put in the hands of the wrong person, great harm could come to our county. In this time of inflation, I don't think we should elect more commissioners. Why place that burden on the taxpayers? We already have enough burdens for us, and it just feels like taxation without representation, and we all know how that turned out. So I do not support this proposal, and therefore I am against it, and I let my voice be heard, and I thank you for listening. Nikki Cervenka. I'm Nikki Cervenka. Um, I don't have a paper, but I will say, uh, being at the meetings, I was appalled at your behavior and several others. Whenever things were brought against you or your decision, you would shut it down so rudely. So uh, with Deborah saying that everything was out of control by us, I would say most likely this was like being in a grade school with you at control. Secondly, I would like to say that I wish that Phileos and uh, Brooks would work for the people as our Leslie Duncan does. Amen. If they would do their job, they would not have needed this group to tell us that they need more help. They do not. Ada County is three times larger than Kootenai County. They have three commissioners. They do not need extra people. We do not need more taxation on us. We are already burdened to the nth degree. It's time for us to stand up and let people be heard and let the people that are working for us do what we're asking. When we come and talk to you, we want to be heard. We would like you to listen to our comments and not shoo shoo us. We're worthy of comments. We're worthy. We are the people. Robert Savenka. Thank you. I um, stand in front of you this, this evening opposed to your um, summary here. The optional forms of government study commission members and alternates, with all due respect, I believe this commission to be a ruse, or let me put this in other words, a deception on the part of specifically two rhino commissioners attempting to foist a progressive agenda on Kootenai County residents with this formulative study on alternate forms of government to supposedly 
streamline, make more efficient and more sustainable government, which is we the people. I believe one of the primary drivers of this study by the two rhinos was the claim that they are overwhelmed with administrative duties. So they need assistance. Why haven't the commissioners hired a county manager and filled the many current vacant positions for that purpose? They do have the ability to do that under this current BOCC. Several things to consider. First, after attending several commission meetings, I believe it is questionable as to if Idaho statutes were strictly followed to arrive at your summary recommendation to the Kootenai BOCC. Second, within your summary recommendation approved by a five to four vote, you have suggested that the Kootenai BOCC be changed to a five board of county commissioners, part-time or full-time not decided, with the addition of a full-time commission manager. There is, this is where I really take issue with this form of government going forward. To believe that consolidating many functions of county government into a commission manager position is paving the way for policy manipulation, corruption, and graft. And by that, I don't mean honest graft, as was existent in Tammany Hall in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Don't allow for any corruption. Most county decision-making would be filtered through this one commission manager position to create a bad degree of corruption temptation. To what degree this would or could be exercised, one can only imagine. Transparency is essential to good government, or we the people. Third, Kootenai County, according to their website, as from the 2020 census, had a population of 171,362 individuals, and now a proposed 2022 budget of $108,922,877, which is overseen by three Kootenai County BOCC. As a comparison, as my wife referred to, Ada County, I believe the most populous county in Idaho as of the 2020 census, had a population of 494,967 individuals with a now proposed 2022 budget of $296 million, which is overseen by also three county commissioners. I ask, are there any of the other 42 counties in Idaho that have a different form of county government other than three commissioners? The number appears to work for Idaho government. This ballot item, if put, put forth, which we know it will, will be under the guise of reasoning of growth. Remember that, growth. No one in Kootenai County can deny that fact, but growth can be managed and limited by certain factors. As one example, growth pays for growth. To that end, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sherry Williams. Okay. Good evening and thank you for being brave enough to listen to all of this. Uh, let me get my... Get here. Get here. I didn't say anything yet. <laughs> well, now I just lost. I'm sorry. I had it a second ago. Hold on. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, I only have half of this, so. <laughs> um, my name's Sherry Williams. I've lived here 46 years. Please speak into the mic. I've lived here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho for 46 years. I did not come here to change the easy, relaxed way of life. I came here for the beauty and peacefulness, the friendly people, and most certainly to leave the fast lane behind. Politics was never an issue. Everyone lived in this state and governed for the greater good. But it seems now the newbies who have lived here a minute have barely moved into our county and want to change all of that. Why don't you live among us instead of trying to displace us? Politeness has gone out of the window. Armed people roam our streets because they have the God-given right to... I have the floor. Have the, have the God-given right uh, to carry their guns. Well, God didn't give you that right. The government yes, did. did. The government did. God didn't even have a gun. Okay, inclusiveness and masks are somehow now scary to the militias, the motorcycle club, the proud boys, the redoubters, the oath keepers, the bozo, the clowns, and certain church leaders and their flock of angelicals who like to cherry pick the Bible to shame others and suit their own ideologies. This is not acceptable. Please be quiet. This is not acceptable and not logical. If a person escapes persecution, as all of you claim to have done from the other states you come from, if they escape from any kind of persecution, why would they move here to do the same to others? They're going to destroy the very beauty and serenity that brought them here. Unless their intention is to turn this county into a lawless, non-government, libertarian, wild west show. It is for these reasons and others that I speak in favor of the committee's plan. With growth, growth comes the necessity for larger government. We need more educated, qualified commissioners. Okay, we need more stupid commissioners, right? You idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow the speakers to have their say. This is rude. It is for these reasons and others that I speak in favor of the committee's plan. With growth comes the necessity for larger government. We need more educated, qualified commissioners to guide our growth. The influx of, of the recent newbies has, has demanded that. We can't decide on anything. Everybody's in each other's faces. It's just, it's gone wild. And we need to hire a qualified CEO as any other large corporation would do to oh, be quiet. Sorry. Sorry. And we need to hire a qualified CEO to oversee our commissioners and take off a portion of their overloaded duties who you people take up most of their time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please behave yourselves. No, it's not you. This is simply rude. When someone spoke the way you wanted it, you were cheering. When someone spoke against what you wanted, you're interrupting and you're being rude. And you're not calling them off when the time is up. Yeah. We're just following your lead, Mr. Chairman. Uh, neither was Mike called, cut off when his time was up, nor others. I've noticed at least three other people have run past their time limits and they were not cut off. So. A, Why didn't you complain when Mike was speaking? We did. We did. Janice, I'm not sure what this is. Is it Sheverstrom? Sheverstrom. 
Um, hello. My concern tonight is with the unaccountability of an appointed or hired manager. For two years now, our entire country has lived under the effects of one unelected man's diktats. Yes. Dr. Fauci says, wear masks. We all have to wear masks. Dr. Fauci says, lockdown, and it happens. Dr. Fauci says, everyone must be jabbed twice, and millions take an experimental shot. I don't fully understand how this happened, but it did. Now I hear that the commission wants to grow itself and appoint a manager that will have unprecedented authorities within Kootenai County while being unanswerable to no one. Who is going to design this new position? What will his or her authority be? Will he be able to override the decisions of elected officials, i.e. the clerk, the treasurer, or sheriff? Will she have a veto over advisory boards and committee appointments? Will he become the de facto county budget officer? Will she have authority over hiring, firing, and supervising county employees? I don't know the answer to any of these questions. I suspect that two of the three commissioners have answers they are unwilling to share. If the answer to even one of these is yes, I ask, how can you consider doing this to the people of this county? I say no to your plans, just let us be. <laughs> Vern Westgate. Thank you. Vern Westgate, been a longtime resident of Coral Lane. <clears throat> My background includes 35 to 40 years in aerospace, defense, aviation, as a system engineer, field engineer, and a project manager. In my personal life, I look for the truth. I follow Jesus, who told Nero just before Nero, or, I'm sorry, not Nero, <clears throat> the other guy, before he was going to kill him, he said, I came to testify the truth. That's why I'm here. This is the truth. I see it. Addressing the root cause of this study does not warrant an extensive organizational change. The best and simplest fix comes from addressing the root cause fix complex systems all over the world based on this philosophy. This is a classic BFO. A BFO is a blinding flash of the obvious. This study was motivated by Chris Filios and Bill Brooks, who claimed to be overloaded. It was not public pressure for change. Yet both work part-time at 90-some thousand a year. <coughs> Leslie Duncan outperforms both of the guys, and Leslie also works full-time plus. The residents of Kootenai County in this position deserves full-time effort by all three commissioners. The current status, Chris Phyllis is also a realtor. For success in today's hot real estate market, that takes full-time effort. Kootenai County citizens need him to select one job or the other, but not both. Bill Brooks and I share a problem. We need mechanical aids to walk. This adds a minimum of three times the physical effort to get around as it does for other people. And it takes far more time. Bill has a greater physical handicap. In addition to walking issue, he is morbidly obese. Okay. The disease of morbid obesity puts a huge load on both his cardiovascular and neurological systems. Both of those are brain-driven. These challenges detract further from his part-time efforts. Reports are that Bill spends a little time on the job, in the office, signed on to his computer, or attending to his expected commissioner duties. By the way, I know Bill. For these handicapped reasons, his performance suffers. The proposed fix, the notion of adding two more part-time commissioners does not warrant consideration. Four part-time commissioners doing the job of two fails any common sense test, especially at 90000 a year. The solution? Leave the current arrangement in place. Recognize that every county in Idaho has three commissioners, including Ada County, has been brought up. 
have Chris Filios choose one position or the other and give his full-time effort to that job, preferably real estate. Okay. Allow or require Bill Brooks to resign for health reasons. What works for the rest of Idaho will surely work well for Kootenai County if we have the right persons in the right positions. The future? The future adjustments are required to a future study that researches for root causes. Don't start out with a preconceived notion. Not to further personal political desires. The founding fathers would never have acted in the manner that's proposed. Gary Scheckenberger. It won't take me long here, but uh, my father and my grandfather fought in two world wars. They went around the country to fight against anarchy. And what I'm seeing here happened to me a couple years ago. I was dealing with a, a, not an elected official, but an appointed official in this county that invoked discretionary power. That means his opinion was that this is what had to happen. And denied me three different remedies in the current code book, the current building code book, that I was supposed to be afforded to, to remedy a situation. This is exactly what happens, can happen, when you put someone in the kind of power you're talking about, when you appoint a county official, county manager. That, that thing that happened to me cost me $50,000, and it cost me a year and four months of my time to do the work that he made me do, that he had no right to make me do. Um, I'm, I'm, what can I say? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, opposed to the even thought of putting in a manager that can do something like that. Kim Eichler. I'd like to say thanks to Leslie Duncan for working hard for the people of Kootenai County. I've met her personally, and I know how dedicated she is to her job as county commissioner. I also thank all of you for this study commission time that you've spent. We've been coming to the meetings uh, about this uh, forms of government change for many months now. Chris Filios and Bill Brooks have been whining about perceived inefficiencies and a lack of control since they took office because of that they don't like the limitations thereof. So they've gone out of their way to go around the founding principles of our fe federal and state government, as stated in, on page one of the Open Meeting Law Manual. They want to add a non-elected appointed manager who will have ultimate power over our cities and counties and add more commissioners, which mean more taxes for us and more opportunity for total corruption with no oversight by the people. And all the time that we've been spending spending here listening to the study group tell us all the reasons why we need these extra people to do their job. No one has ever wanted to talk about the costs that will fall to the taxpayers. Whenever it was brought up, it was uh, shut down and they moved on. I have heard nothing but praise for those working as county clerk, treasurer, assessor, sheriff, coroner, and prosecuting attorney. We like and appreciate all that they are doing and we like how they work and the power they hold in our community. We don't want that to change. We've needed a new computer operating system for some time. Having an updated software system would enable employees to reach optimum job performance and it would increase the effective lines of communication between departments. There are funds in the general fund to pay for the system with no cost to taxpayers, but that help option has also been, uh, has not been started. They actually have the authority to hire admin assistants, but they haven't done that either. 
One of the commissioners could be chosen to head up the administration of the BOCC, but they haven't chosen that option either. They could reorganize the BOCC department to better serve the commissioners. A chief operating officer position could be created. A county manager could be hired to help administration duties. But none of these options have been utilized or tried. Why? Because there's, they'd still have to do their job, and they would not end up with all the ultimate power that their change in our government would give them. To centralize power to one person, as you have proposed, would create a tyrannical system that is against our federal, our fundamental values upon which our American society was founded. Agenda 21 is nothing more than a UN communist agenda to take over America, which is another thing that they're after. We don't want any of that either, and we don't want uh, your alternative form of government. There are five people on this study commission who have voted no in charge and change of our government. They are Kurt Anderson, Bryant Bushing, Tamara Batesman, alternate Bruce Matari, and Vice uh, Chair Brian Cleary. I stand with these people and say no to any change in our government. Thank you. Rory Cheney. Thank you. I do not support this proposal. I don't know anyone who does. As you've repeat, uh, repeatedly heard this evening, the problem with this, these appointed positions is that they are un un unaccountable to the people. We, the people, do not want this. And shame on you for supporting this proposal. Thank you. Is it Alita, uh, uh, Janetta Michael? That's it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Janetta yeah. Michael? There we go. My name is Janetta Michael, and I've lived in Post Falls for nearly 17 years. Up front, let me say that I've attended several of these meetings and watched almost all of the others online. The first thing that struck me was the quality and caliber of the vast majority of the elected officials that now serve our county. I also noted that almost unanimously, they were not in favor of many, if not all, of the proposed changes. These are the people now serving in the jobs we're discussing, and I believe they should listen and learn from them. Perhaps they have better proposals for streamlining our county government, providing more efficiency, saving money, and serving the will of the people. After listening to them and the ensuing committee discussions, I am adamantly opposed to all of the proposed changes to our county governance. History tells me that these changes will be expensive, not cost-cutting, when has bigger government ever cost less? Turning elected officials who are now directly accountable to the people into political appointees breaks that chain of accountability and gives us more unelected bureaucrats. Adding to the number of supervisors who set their own hours and wages will also be expensive. We simply need to elect supervisors willing to do the work they signed up for and are paid for. The supervisors could hire a county manager like Ada County's COO without a ballot vote. Updating the obsolete operating system while an initial expense could facilitate better coordination, cost savings, and efficiency throughout the agencies. We don't need these intrusive, undemocratic, bureaucratic, bloated changes. Perhaps some personnel changes would be all that's necessary. Perhaps the supervisors who instigated this committee. <laughs> Don Eichler. I just don't think that uh, this county needs to be the first county in Idaho to have five commissioners when we have bigger counties that get along just fine with three. It sounds like we have two commissioners that are not doing their job. They need to retire, get some people in there that will do the job. And uh, I don't think we need a change. And I've heard it said that 
that the commissioners might be part-time and that it costs less for five part-time commissioners than the three we've got? Does anybody in the room believe that? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Linda Mitchell. My name is Linda Mitchell, and I'm a resident of Kootenai County. I'm opposed to the optional form of government. The amount of tax dollars required to add commissioners and staff would be a substantial burden on all taxpayers in Kootenai County. How can you consider making a change without a cost-benefit analysis? To the commissioners, I have this message. You need to work full-time. This is not a part-time job. If you cannot fulfill the oath you took to perform the duties of an elected commissioner, step down and we, the people of Kootenai County, will elect a new commissioner. The 30-year-old operating system must be updated immediately, and the funds to do so are already in the budget. This should have been done years ago. Once updated, you will be able to complete your work more efficiently with fewer employees. Also, there are 75 open positions that are in the budget. What is keeping these positions open? James, is it McLaurin? Pass. Pass. Yeah, pass. Daniel Owsley? Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Owsley. I reside in Hayden, Idaho. I strongly oppose changing to a commission manager form of government and increasing the number of commissioners to five. There are two main reasons. These are based off of my own personal experience. The first reason is this idea, and I've heard it bandied about at several of these meetings, that we can get an expert in or we can get expert uh, components or bring expertise into county government. Uh, just to give you an idea of my experience, let me give you a real quick background. I'm an IT architect. I have specialized in smart grid technologies for years. I used to work for one of the largest IT companies in the world. Um, at this point, uh, roughly 25 million smart meters are being monitored in California, Arizona, and Nevada based off of systems that I designed. Uh, these designs have been replicated throughout North America and the rest of the world. In 2006, I was appointed to the Energy and Utilities Architectural Council from this corporation. This council consisted of experts appointed uh, by different groups within this, within this company, from hardware to software to services organizations to business process experts. I can tell you that a committee of experts, experts will do exactly what the person who appointed them to the committee really pushes. Expertise does not, and I can tell you from personal experience, expertise does not guarantee that they are immune from political pressure and that they will not do the wrong thing or will not do what the person who appointed them pushes them to do. As voters, we need to have the ability to vote for the components of our government that directly fed affect our lives. The further away these components are from the voters, the less likely they are to represent the will of the voters. Both a commission manager form of government and appointed row officers remove that, account, remove that accountability to the voters. And while I know this commission has not made a recommendation to appoint row officers, my concern is the moment we get a commission manager that that will be the next step in line. And so I want to make sure that you understand that we, the people of Kootenai County, strongly object to that course that you're taking. The second concern that I have is that county commissioners, given the ability to have off-the-record meetings, will always, always create a perception of corruption. Like it or not, in today's political climate, perception is reality. The lack of trust in government is growing by leaps and bounds. If we look at a Pew poll from 2021, trust among Gen Z, the youngest generation is now down in government, is now down to 
creating a situation where county commissioners can hold meetings that are effectively off the record, whether it creates corruption or not, will always create the perception of corruption. In today's world, politicians need to walk a tightrope of good governance. Transparency to voters is a crucial part of good governance. It's part of the checks and balances the founders saw as utmost importance. I object to any change in the current government. Thank you. Tom Shoemaker. Chairman, point of clarification first, uh, your opening statements, uh, did we hear that none of these six county heads will be removed from the voting rights of all the public? All these county heads will still be electable? Is that what you were saying? We are not here to answer questions, but that answer is correct. Okay. That, they are you. still elected. Thank you. I'll, I'll shorten this up. Thank you. I also am not in favor of increasing the uh, number of commissioners by two more. Uh, I think every other county in this state apparently is getting along well with three commissioners. I don't understand why Kootenai County must have 60% more than that. Other counties are much larger than us. Other counties are also growing faster than us. And we can't seem to get things done as well as is going on in most of the other counties. Uh, we don't understand quite the, the, uh, the undertones as to what may be going on here. But some people that are in positions now are not doing their jobs. That's why they want two more commissioners, apparently, a bigger bureaucracy, a more expensive bureaucracy. Uh, how do we hold the existing commissioners responsible for doing what we elected them to do? I think it's a better question, not whether we need to hire two or four more commissioners, uh, which was part of the original part of the original program that was announced. Also hiring a commission manager, and I'll shorten this up because it's said by numerous people, <clears throat> this position is subject to a buddy-buddy crony cronyism by the people that may be in place to appoint this person. We don't need more of this. We need more electable officials, not people that are appointed to these positions. Uh, there would be too much power that could be concentrated into this one person. We need all the checks and balances that we have today. We can't afford to let any of those slide and slide into the lap of one person. Uh, there's been problems in the past in this state when situations uh, were in place for that, and we all paid the price. Uh, whether all these commissioners need admin aides, which I think is also in the proposal, uh, I can't answer. But we don't want five commissioners with admin aides or, and other, <clears throat> other administrative people to be appointed to the, the budget. The budget will only grow. It will grow out of control. And I'm not sure what the people in this room get other than a much higher budget and, and larger tax rolls. So I'm not in favor of adding these commissioners. I'm not in favor of anything going on the ballot in November to change what we're doing today. Thank you. William Lee. Hi, uh, my name is William Lee. Uh, some of you might already know me because I've been to about 90%, 95% of these meetings uh, in person. And uh, well, this started in March of 2000, um, 2020. 
something like that, right? Or something like that. But I've been to a lot of meetings um, here, and um, I've had the privilege to see how the process has been conducted. Uh, I've seen how during the first public comment, uh, we had about 40 people or, um, or so come out and say that they did not want this. You had one guy named uh, Evan Koch or something like that. Um, he's the chairman of the Democratic Party here. Um, he, was, he was the only guy that actually wanted it. Surprise, surprise. Um, and I've watched the meetings happen, how the chairman, you, Mr. Bodding, how you've conducted the meetings. Uh, almost at every pivotal corner, the processes have been shoehorned, have been finessed. You've used a lot of underhanded tactics, like going through uh, CDA press um, to unmask uh, some people that were um, should have had the, um, the privilege of uh, confidentiality. And um, I just want to say, I mean, I see this, I think a lot of people here see this also, is that the fruit, the product of this committee, and I know that you guys on the report are saying that it's a majority that have voted for this, but I think you were very um, adamant about not saying that it was a very it's a, it was a very split majority, a five to four split majority. But you left that out of the report, which is you know it's just kind of it's that it's that thing again. It's the finessing the process, you know, finessing of the process, and the you know kind of shoehorning words and um, creating a perception. The whole fruit of this committee. And this is not to slight the people who have been very thoughtful and asking good questions in this committee. Um, but the fruit of this whole committee is is uh, an abomination. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's 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 totally totally worthless. It's it's the fruit of just uh, just tyranny. I think we all see that, and um, I just want to say that. Uh, there's a lot of people who want to change Kootenai County um, and have a lot of devious plans to do that and to accomplish it. Kristen Wing, uh, Phil Ward, you guys have um, caught the eye of the community uh, development here in Kootenai County, which, you know, they kind of oversee like a lot of how Kootenai County develops. Um, and in Coeur d'Alene, Phil Ward is on the planning commission. He, he, got, he got their eye and now he's on their committee. So there's a huge undercurrent and huge effort to really change the shape of how Kootenai County, uh, you know, the conservative values or whatever you want to call it, is to, to undermine that. Um, and I just want to say is that, you know, you guys can make the effort, but us, the people, throughout this whole year, we've been watching. And I don't want to say this in a, I guess I can get in legal trouble for saying this, but... I just want to say is that people recognize this sort of thing and people will find out and will there will be consequences I guess is what I'm saying and I'm not I'm not saying anything that's like I'm not saying anything that's like talking about like violence or anything like that but I mean people will seek to boycott you people will seek to sniff out all of your affiliations your associations your friends if you try to change the shape of this community and going against the will, violating the political will of this community and our values, people will seek to do that. And you should not be surprised. Thank you. Bruce Matari. As an alternate to this commission, I have two words for you, process and credibility. After almost four months of interviews, the Commission started their deliberations on the first night with a preliminary vote for change and then proceeded with compiling strengths and weaknesses for the final report. There's never been any discussions about previous guest statements or problems worthy of changing our current form. And what were the problems that we heard? The main problem from current and former commissioners was 
They couldn't control other elected officials. Commissioner Filios embodied this concept by wanting the, pa the power to fire our sheriff. And he also listed other significant reasons to justify changing our form of government. Reasons like the purchase of four desk frames for $279 each. Really? Then there's a $7,000 expense to change sheriff patrol cars to have white doors. Now, our sheriff wanted to do this because it reduces taxpayer liability in high-speed chases. But instead of letting an expert decide like our sheriff, he questions it and includes this as another example as to why we need to change our form of government. But then there's my favorite. The commissioner complained about a $683 expense to pay for 10 gifts to give to retiring government employees. So after 20 years, these public service employees are not even worth a $69 parting gift. Not only did he suggest you should consider changing our form of government because of this, but he also revealed his disposition toward career employees at the county. Can anybody on this commission argue that these are even remotely legitimate reasons to change our current form of government? Then there is the issue of the number of commissioners. This is where I believe politics has corrupted the process. On July 10, 2020, the same commissioner stated in a YouTube video, and I quote, and until and unless we change county structure, and that's not likely to happen in the short run, three commissioners, if you get two votes, control of the county, end quote. I believe that is the real reason we're here. Now, here's where I believe things get a little shady. Few people realize that the chairman of this commission, Dave Botting, was also Commissioner Filios' treasurer. That's never been formally disclosed to the commission members or the public. This seems like an obvious conflict of interest. For him to install his political operative to become chairman onto what is supposed to be an unbiased study commission undermines this community. This is the kind of politics I don't think people want here in Kootenai County. I believe the credibility of this commission has been permanently tarnished because of this, and frankly, I believe you, the other fine members of this commission, and our community out here deserve a lot better. Thank you. David, you got exposed. <laughs> I didn't know that. Sandra Shoemaker. Good evening. My name is Sandra Shoemaker. I'm a resident of Hayden. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to reemphasize what has been mentioned before that the preliminary vote was a five to four vote, which is a very narrow recommendation, and um, I think that needs to be made public. And because of that, I want to acknowledge the four study commission members who voted no change and the non voting alternate that affirmed their position Kurt Anderson, Tamara Bateson. Bryant Bushy and Brian Cleary clearly stood with the wishes of the residents of the county. And alternate Bruce Matari affirmed their position. The remaining five study commissioners voted, voted, recommended changing the number of commissioners and voted to create a new position, which means an entire bureaucracy with a hired commissioner. This position would consolidate power, control under one person, anyone that one person chose to hire. This option was recommended by Commissioner Filios, Evan Koch, and strongly supported by a gentleman by the name of David Childs. This is not an unbiased objective, but an agenda-driven attempt to overhaul Kootenai County government, consolidate power and control under one position, I call it the Agenda 21 Driven Commission. No factual problems were identified, only unsupported claims of needs of efficiency, effectiveness. And it's interesting that those words are found all everywhere throughout the literature of <clears throat> people that propose going forward with Agenda 21. Also, the 
buzzword strategic planning. I would like to uh, state, in my opinion, this commission appears, uh, five members of this commission have appeared to have had a predetermined outcome, dominated by a biased chairman to assure that the predetermined outcome is achieved. And they brought forward this gentleman to, pre in, to um, underwrite their opinions, Mr. David Childs, who is a 40-year-plus member of an organization called ICMA. It's an international organization of city and county management. I have a document I just downloaded from the internet two days ago. It's a position paper of the ICMA, and it entirely re addresses ways to bring about the transference of power in county and city government under Agenda 21. is a, the, what the recommendations were for Agenda 21, the Rio Summit. 350 pages of regulations that we would be subjected to if they bring in their county manager, whom David Childs is recommending. And he's the expert. And I'm wondering, will this person that they want to hire for this county commission position be evaluated by the recommended principles for our training, effectiveness, education, and qualifications of David Childs and the ICMA. And I have here some, a statement I'd like to read to you from a real expert on what sustainable development Agenda 21 really is. Sustainable development is an international scheme for total control over human society that comes disguised as scores of national and local policies. It is a war against free enterprise, private property, and the individual. Sustainable policy is designed to rein in the radical idea of free enterprise, private property, and individual liberty, and to harmonize all nations into a central global control. And the expert from this organization is what was presented to this commission and the public as the person we should look to for leadership. And I'm wondering if well, the person that they are thinking of hiring, because they probably have someone in mind, isn't directly out of this organization. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. I think. It's just about 7 o'clock. Let's take a 15 minute break, reconvene at 7.15. Motion. <laughs> Breaks apart a motion under Robert's rule of order. May I have a motion, someone? I make a motion to, that we have a break. Do we have a second? Who wants a break? Who wants a break? We're taking a break. Oh, you can't go. You can't take a break. You didn't vote for it. We actually did not vote for the agenda. We did not vote for we went from your announcement straight to the Do we do that when we come back? Um, that was my time.
Everyone has had a chance to hit the restrooms, if we can come back to the order. Thank you. The next name I have is Stan Miskeck. I probably butchered it, and if I did, I you did. apologize. It's probably, it's probably my, my writing. It's, uh, my name is Stan Mickles. Mickles, I apologize. Mickles, M-I-C-K-E-L-S, resident of Coeur d'Alene, formerly a immigrant from the separate nation called Washington State. <laughs> I have lived in Washington for 40 years and lived in cities that had city managers. They were absolutely a failure. The reason I say that is two things. Accountability and the second word and it's been said here amongst the group, transparency. If we don't have transparency and accountability, we are in big, big trouble and we're going to end up just like every other blue state in this country. We need to stand up and have our elected officials held accountable and we need to always be in a position that the, the system is transparent. Thank you very much for your time. Ed DePriest. Okay, good evening. Um, first of all, thank you. This is projecting out, yeah. Uh, for the opportunity to speak to you. I've I had some original notes on scratch down things as people have spoken. Um, I believe, I think we've all known from the beginning where this is all going. Uh, I said it from the very beginning. Um, I believe it's been a waste of time uh, for the most part. I believe either you will decide not to put it on the ballot or you'll put it on the ballot. It will fail and we'll all move on. Uh, and that being said, um, I attended a few of the meetings. I've watched a number of the meetings on whatever it is online there. But part of after hearing a lot of things tonight, I, I, I have to say that I do get the impression that many in the audience don't seem to trust the voters uh, that they so often refer to. Um, everyone in, in this room, along with the other approximately 103,000 registered voters, will have a chance to vote, yes or no, to whatever ends up if possibly being put on the ballot. Um, all that's really been happening over the last number of months it appears to me to be a discussion and evaluation to determine if the county needs to change the form of government. Um, regardless of what this group says, 103,000 registered voters will have the final say when the primary public input, the vote, occurs. This group will not mandate, I don't know, that's not such a good word these days, is it? Uh, <laughs> Anything, as the citizens will determine the form of government changes, if any. Again, either the majority will vote yes, or the majority, majority will vote no. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Isn't that how those who truly believe in the Constitution want it to be? Give the choices to the people and let them vote. I'm glad to see all the people here wanting to express their feelings. Along with the voices here will come as many of the 103,000 registered county voters who decide to vote come election day. 
Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Um, in reality, I like that elected representatives want to give the people a choice for change. To put it out there and say, hey, let, do, do you, the people, want to look at another way of doing things? So I really don't have that much of a problem with whether this makes it to the, the vote or not. Because, again, I, I said earlier, I think pretty good idea of what's going to happen. Uh, but again, it's giving the people an opportunity to really express themselves. This is one opportunity, but the real way people express themselves is when they make that mark on the ballot. So, um, please, by all means, everyone here, continue to express your opinions. Uh, but when the time to vote comes, if it is put on the ballot, please vote when it really counts. Thank you very much. Daniel Fry. Oh. I just put my phone away. All right. Uh, I'll start off right off the bat. I disagree with all of this. I think it's a waste of time, as there has been plenty of eloquent speakers out here who's given you the reasons why, including what looks like cronyism. Okay, so I want to address a deeper issue here. So I don't know if you're familiar with the term chronological snobbery. Uh, I believe it was coined by C.S. Lewis. And the term if you can stay close to the microphone so that people out that are watching can hear you. Uh, I can hear me. I know what I can do. I'm not talking about people in this room. I'm talking about people who are watching online. Understood. They'll still hear me. So, because of chronological snobbery, there's this attitude that, that um, there's an attitude of superiority that goes along with chrono chronological snobbery. Okay, the end goal of chronological snobbery is utopia. Okay, you hear words like progress, you hear things like improvement, better, uh, uh, superior, whatever the term happens to be, the end state is utopia brought about by man. Okay, I don't have to tell you what a utopia of man looks like. The communist state of the Soviet Union or China or Cuba gives you a good idea of what, a, of what the end state of a, of a chronological snobbery and the illusion of of change and progress is. Let me take that to the next step. This is not a political action. This is a religious action. And I want to highlight that. When Dave got up and spoke today, how did he talk about the state statutes? It's exactly how I would read out of the Bible. Okay, That is his Bible. His Bible is the code. His Bible is the statutes. And he treats it as such because he believes himself to be of the level of clergy. All of you are serfs. All of you are beneath him. And all I hear in this crowd constantly is how smug and arrogant you are. And you know why? Because you honestly believe you're better than us. Because you believe you are the clergy of statism and you know what's best for us. I'm sorry, sir. Every single one of these people are intelligent, thinking, valuable human beings that do not need your input and do not need the state to get into their lives. Thank you. Mike Satron. I'm Mike Satron from Coeur d'Alene, uh, Precinct 22 committee man, Republican Party. Uh, I do not, I think that this whole exercise has been a result of two good old boys, commissioners, having a two to one vote over a liberty and constitution oriented commissioner and liking it that way, That's right. but fearing they might lose that. And so, alternate forms of government to try to put up some kind of a roadblock to that. Now, so I don't believe there's a need for any more than three commissioners. Let's see what Leslie Duncan has done. Uh, brought forward uh, for the BOC's approval to improve county processes, procedures, and operations. All this was accomplished while receiving thousands of emails and attending hundreds of meetings. Expenditure policy. 
change to comply with state law, increase in accountability, and lessen bureaucratic process. Unclaimed body policy to show to allow funeral homes to get paid for services for unclaimed bodies according to state law. Several human resources policies, including on-call pay, holiday pay, and administrative items now handled by HR instead of the BOCC. Cut down meetings from once a week to twice a month. Fleet management policy bifurcated with the sheriff's office. Combine the status update meetings on into the BOCC regular meetings on Tuesdays. Develop the process to accept bids for the tax deeded properties not sold at auctions. Snow groomer department brought under parks and waterways resulting in increased miles groomed and better service to the snowmobiling community. Each year works on advisory board reappointments, interviews and updates. Instituted a contract sheet to simplify Commissioner's review of contracts before approval of in the new on-base software program testified before the legislature against overregulation that would negatively impact the taxpayers of Kootenai County. Public Defense Commission rules slash property tax changes. Developed requests for qualifications for new courthouse architecture services currently lead currently liaison for architects and stakeholders during planning meetings, help secure a new location for public defender's office, developed relationships with other elected officials countywide to improve cooperation, developed two-year, five-year, and ten-year plans for facilities and personnel. She did all of this while standing up for the rights of citizens to keep their elected officials elected. Now, Having said that, I would like to add that more of you were appointed by the two good old boys than were appointed by Leslie Duncan. So this was a setup to begin with, in my opinion. I also don't like the attitude taken by Mr. Brooks and particularly about his dismissive comments about Leslie Duncan over time, which to me border on misogyny. Now, having said that, God save us from our betters. God save us from our betters. Daryl Jenkins. Go, Daryl. I'm Daryl Jenkins from Hauser, Idaho. I have a two minute and 30 second. Uh, speech ready. I'm going to uh, preface it with uh, something new. Mr. Botting, I apologize that someone has been rude to you, but I'm requesting that you refrain from voting on this issue because you have not, according to the people I have talked to, announced that your p position and your opinion is compromised. So I'm requesting that you refrain from your vote. I did not know you were the uh, treasurer for Mr. Filios. Okay? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me, David? Finish your speech before you run out of time. The Kootenai County is speaking here tonight. This is off my speech. We're speaking here tonight. That's right. Okay? That's right. We are angry. Yes. You have now made me angry because you will not answer my question to the people of Kootenai County. We do not like Felios and Brooks. They have demonstrated poor behavior, both of them, to many of the people in this room. I'll now go on with my speech. I have lived in North Idaho now for 24 years. Although there is no perfect government, local government here has been working very well since 1864. The history, I added this, of Kootenai County commissioners making promises to the people is not worthy of our respect. 
I remember about 20 some years ago, they invoked a half a percent sales tax increase. It'll go away as soon as we build the jail or whatever they're going to do with the money, and then we'll reduce the sales tax back to 5%. That never happened. So we do not trust those nice promises and ideas of a $1,500 a month salary reduction. We do not trust that that will happen with these current two commissioners in charge. <clears throat> Kootenai County government is government of the people, for the people, and by the people, and this shall not perish. I believe it is the job of the commissioners to do the will of the people. After listening to the information presented by staff, elected officials, and experts, the will of the people is being spoken here. It is overwhelming. Let us not forget, we the people form this government for us not we for the government. The need for more commissioners or a county manager has not been demonstrated here. The old saying is still true, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Instead of fixing what isn't broken, let's fix what is broken. Like the building department's request for an allowance of two weeks for an inspection, or the line at the DMV. Hiring more commissioners, staff, overhead, county managers, staff, and overhead leads to big government. We do not want big government. <clears throat> big government is expensive, bureaucratic, slower, less personal, more socialistic, and more controlling. Yeah. Just look at the federal government. I encourage those that have expressed a desire for bigger government to move to Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Don't destroy, Co Co destroy Kootenai County. I moved here. I'm a newbie. I haven't offered to destroy this county by changing it from what's been successful. In conclusion, what we need are good people to do the good job. I request all nine of you vote no change to Kootenai County. The overwhelming will of the people is no change. James Jeffries. My name is James Jeffries. I've lived around here my whole life. You got to tear that sign down because you don't believe it. You sit up there with that smug look on your face. You come out here, you insult us, you call us stupid, uninformed. We're not uninformed. You're uninformed. Obviously, someone forgot to tell you that you work for us. That's all I got to say. Marty Fish. Thank you for your time. And I am here to tell you that we are tired. These people here, they got other things to do. We're tired. You know what we're really tired of? People telling us what's good for us rather than let us make that decision. We're tired of being lied to. We're tired of being told, we're going to have a lockdown. You need a mask. You don't need a mask. You do this. Turn them all against each other. It's black. It's white. It's racist. We're tired of it. And I want to tell you something, sir. I don't even know you. But I agree with my brother here that this is a spiritual battle. And I want to tell you, I just want to warn you in the name of Jesus that God hates a haughty look. And you know what haughty comes from? The word hot. In the Latin, it comes from those who look down on others. And if you really care about the will of the people and you really want what the people want, you wouldn't be fighting it at every turn here. This, this is the first uh, 
meeting I've come of this sort because I'm busy doing other political things, but this is crazy the way you're acting. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And, and I fear for your soul, brother. I, I pray that you will repent and, and give your heart to Jesus Christ that you will not burn in hell for eternity because there will be hell to pay for these types of actions. And we're tired of it and we ain't going to put up with it. So the bottom line is whether or not you vote right, that's on you. You're going to have to give an, an, an answer. All of you are going to have to give an answer to what you did on this earth before your maker. Think about that as you vote for this. And think about what is really good for the people here. And, and we hear all these words like, oh, the common good, the, the overall, you know, we have this plan and this, this planning. This isn't planning. This is politicizing every little turn that we do. So if there's one thing I can tell you is please repent before it's too late. That's the most important thing here because this is a battle of good and evil and you're on the wrong side. In Jesus' name, I declare it. Is it Katie McCollum? Good evening. I'm Katie McCollum from Coeur d'Alene, and I'd like to know why are you here? Why are you here? During the July 27, 2020 commissioners meeting, Bill Brooks said that he thought the head of the Panhandle Health Department, just one position, should be an elected position. Oddly enough, during the October 20, 2020 commissioners meeting, Bill Brooks brought up and made a motion to approve a resolution that he drafted 2020-69 Alternate Forms of Government Study Commission, a commission that would decide whether or not to recommend putting on the ballot whether several important Kootenai County positions would be appointed, not elected. So in a matter of less than three months, Bill Brooks thought that the head of the Panhandle Health Department should be elected but the sheriff, coroner, assessor, and other important county positions should be appointed. When Brooks first brought up this proposal, the community showed up at the commissioner meetings and talks to say, no, we don't want this. At lectures and talks, he called anyone that opposed him stupid, ignorant, misinformed, love this one, chihuahuas with microphones, <laughs> behaving like hyenas taking down a zebra, and said many other rude things to the community, many of those people whom had voted for him. And shame on you, Dave Botting, because you said, oh, that's just Bill. He doesn't have a filter. This man represents the constituents of Kootenai County, yet he calls them names when they are not agreeing or doing his bidding as you are. There is no need for the residents of Kootenai County to incur more taxes to pay for five or seven commissioners and a city manager when three are just fine if the three work together. Bill Brooks tells anyone that will listen to him that he doesn't like one of the commissioners and we know that is and he doesn't like working with them if he can't do his job and work together with both of the other commissioners then he should step down and let the county have a more receptive commissioner Chris Filios was on the board from on board for all this from the beginning, and it was very obvious from his interview that I sat here and watched in person, his interview with the city commission, this study commission, he was campaigning for the city manager job every step of the way. He already created one job and gave it to someone in this room, and she is fiercely loyal to him. That's how appointments go. That is also how current jobs and new jobs get created and friends and family and special interest groups get appointed. That's how more corruption happens in our local government. 
This study commission is a mistake. It, it should have never come to pass. Never. Brooks and Filios are counting on you giving them what they want, and they're counting on the special interest groups in this county voting for their plan. All of you are merely their tool, a means to an end. The vast majority of the people that have come and that you have interviewed have told you to leave things the way they are. The majority of the community that you're here to represent have also said, leave things the way they are. Four of you listened to the interviewees and to the community. Five of you, I believe, were appointed so that you could have this plan work because your minds were made up before you even got started. Alan Golub. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alan Golub, I live in Hayden for about the last 30 years. I grew up in California. I was born in 1952. When I grew up in California, what I was going to say was said very well by a, my fellow citizens. So I'll just tell you an anecdotal story. I was born in 1952 in California, in San Fernando, California. None of us were rich, but none of us felt poor. We could, we could travel, we can go to the beach, we could surf, we could ski on the same day. In 1991, I wanted to build a granny flat for my, grand, for my father-in-law. I followed all the rules, but you see, in California by mandate or by statute, every county has five commissioners. There's a reason Idaho has three, because when you have three, you can't have a secret meeting with two. But what happened, I followed all the rules, I had to pay $8,000 in fees to go before I thought planning and zoning, but in the county, now they had an unelected, unelected bureaucrat. And I had to go before him, and he said, even though I followed all the rules, it was his opinion that the county was growing too fast, and he denied my place. I said, well, sir, I have neighbors that have the same thing. He said, well, if you don't like it, why don't you get the hell out of here and move? So I took his advice, <laughs> and I bought 200 acres along the highway in Hayden. And my wife was pregnant at the time with my son. And my son now has two little girls. And I will fight, and people here will fight, that our grandchildren will not go through the crap that we went through in California. Thank you. I believe it's Susan Lehman. I'm Susan Lehman. I'm from Hayden. Um, and first off, I want to say I believe that underneath it all, as human beings, we all would much rather get along. I believe that, you know, everybody in this room, you guys, I believe that we all have the divine spark within. Another phrase is just saying we're all children of God. We have fear, anger, desire for power, jealousy, all that stuff gets on top. But underneath it all, we'd much rather get along. So how does that bring in the concept of America? What is America for? The whole purpose of America is for ordinary people, everybody in this room, to get together with their elected officials, debate ideas, and solve problems. That's it. 
That's the relationship. And I've got, there's a wonderful book here, I highly recommend it, The American Soul by Jacob Needleson. Needleman, The American Soul, great book. Um, so here's a quote from Jefferson. Both of our political parties, at least the honest part of them, agree conscientiously in the same object, the public good. But they differ essentially in what they deem the means of promoting that good, which is right, time and experience will prove. And he was talking about a particular issue that they were dealing with. We think that one side of this experiment has been long enough tried and proved not to promote the good of the many. Our opponents think the reverse. With whichever opinion the body of the nation concurs, that must prevail. So he's out and out saying, we're giving the argument, they're giving the argument, whatever the people say they want to they believe in must prevail. I'm a newbie, but it seems like the, the, you know, the side that the people are siding with is, is pretty clear. So it's, but the, the relationship is between us and the elected officials. That's the relationship. Sometimes it's contentious, you know, and sometimes we criticize the elected officials and hold their feet to the fire. That's kind of our job. You know, that's it. All you guys, when you're in this room sometime like here and other people are up sitting up there, that's your job too. You know, that's, that's how it works. What gets in the way of that is when bureaucracy comes into play. And I don't, you mentioned that, you know, you could fire this person. I don't actually, I'm not as concerned about somebody who is incompetent and gets fired. I'm more concerned about the person who does their job and stays years and years and years and who starts to become more of a guide for the board than these people. That's my concern. So I think sometimes it's time to remember who we are. We're Americans. You, us, all of us. This is what we're here for. This is, this is, it's not our stuff. It's not our buildings. It's this that makes us a shining light to the world. Thank you. Elisa Schmoltz. First of all, I cannot believe that we are actually here having this discussion right now. Um, I had notes planned. Everybody has said what I wanted to say. Um, but uh, you guys are kidding yourself if you think that is what is happening in the blue states and the blue cities couldn't happen here. If we go down the road of hiring a manager or uh, city manager, it's pretty predictable. So I'm absolutely against hiring a city manager and also I think three council members is good. Thanks. Um, can you make out that last name? Joe, it looks like A R C H A M. It's French. It's French. Right. Sorry, Joe. That's okay. All right, everybody stole what I wanted to say in the first place. Other than you guys put on a good show for all these months. I'm proud of you. Who would have thought? You, you started with a preconceived idea of what you wanted. Everybody said, from Brooks and Philios, we went all the way through. You sent out one of your minions to go find, not in the state because we couldn't find one in the state that had more than three. So we sent them to the East Coast, we sent them to Utah, the Dakotas, and we came up with what the five, you, what you guys wanted, five commissioners and a paid honcho. Initially, Filios tried to scare everybody by saying, we're not going to have it, we're going to appoint the sheriff. But that was just a ruse that you guys were well aware of, 
because immediately that changed early on in the, in the program that you guys ran. So then you get to the end and you bring in the paid honcho, the guy I talked about it, David Childs, who cries a lot. He cried a lot on when he was here and he cried on his YouTube videos when he presented what he presented to people. It was a joke. He was a hired, a hired gun to help you convince yourselves that you were doing the right thing from day one by going with five and a paid and a paid honcho. It's wrong. You can tell by people here, they don't believe in it. You had four people on your commission that didn't believe in it. I've seen in the meetings, I've seen them shut down by you, among other people. Abused women like Tamara. And it's, it's just uncalled for. So you can do what you want with this thing, but if it goes to the public, because the two councilmen are councilmen, the two county managers, if they're going to push it, no matter how you add it up. So thank you for your time. Don Warner. Well, I, I prepared some notes, but I got to say at the outset here, uh, I'm overwhelmed by what the public, you folks, are saying to the commission. I've been here just about three years. I came from that other socialist state <laughs> called Washington, too. But I'm so glad I got involved. And I really want to thank you folks because it was my, other than being on the Parks and Waterways Advisory Board, which I thought I would start to understand kind of what goes on in Kootenai County, it was this education of hearing and watching each of you, almost all the meetings, to include the two gentlemen and, and, and lady uh, that, are, that are online. And uh, so I've really followed this. I've really followed it, but I think what you're hearing right now is the will of the people. They are speaking. And for you to come back at your meeting next week and try and dance to the tune of putting something in front of the commissioners, if it's the wrong thing, you've not done your job. So let me just read a few things I prepared, and then I'll just talk to you a little bit, and we'll conclude. I'd like to thank each of you, as I said, because I know it takes time. I, I've also been there with you, but you've been putting in the hours. Uh, but having reviewed your published uh, analysis of strength and weaknesses for the forms of government and your recommendations, I, as a Kootenai County voter, have even more concerns because I question the substance of what I may be voting on. Why do I say that? Because you've told us what you think based on the testimony of many Kootenai County leaders, managers, and staff, past and present, and based on the findings of what has worked for other counties across the U.S. Yes, you've answered the mail. But you haven't substantiated or quantified anything based on data, details that would help me as a voter make an informed decision. This team has not identified what the real problems are. And then bringing these issues forward as a means for voters to see clearly why it might make sense to vote for a particular form of government. It just doesn't exist. You put strengths and weaknesses, they're not quantified. They're just a list of stuff came from your post-it notes and you put them up there. I applaud the process but it doesn't help me one bit. So, so if you haven't substantiated or qu quantified anything based on data or details that would help me as a voter make an informed decision, you've not identified what the real problems are. So why even put this issue on the ballot? Why? You can't back it up. You can't. You haven't. Some of you might say that was not what we were asked to do, meaning the real issues. And I say to you as a voter, you're wasting the time of me, the people behind me, and the people of this county by asking us to go to vote, to go to the polls, because the commissioners putting your recommendations on ballot, I think, are just kicking the can down the road. Kicking the can down the road. And that's exactly what's going to happen if we don't address the real issues. Now, why did the BOCC request this project in the first place? What was the motivation? Was it political? Or could it have been they were truly looking for a way to improve the support to the voters in the county 
but weren't sure how to approach it. I don't know. But it's to time to drive a stake in the ground and stop the business as usual approach to solving continuing issues. Now, let me just stop and say this. There are issues. There were really a lot of process issues. There's lack of any planning for the, for the future. You heard that very qualified people in leadership, managerial level, and so forth. You all heard that. I heard that. Many of these people heard that. So one thing you could do, if you don't have to do anything because you're hearing the will of voters to talk about the issue of, is it three or five? I don't think that's the issue. I honestly don't. I think that can be made to work. I think if you went back and you had some guts and determination as a commission to go back to the commissioners and says, we recommend everything stay the same, but we did find some issues and here's what we recommend. That I think you can take to the bank. Because if you take the time, even as part of this process, to bring in some of those key people and start to peel the onion back, peel the layers of the onion back, you're going to find that there are some organizational issues. That's not to say the county doesn't have good people. That's to say there's processes that are broken. There's processes that don't exist. And we as a county, and I want to stand behind Kootenai County as a voter and as a, as a person who lives here, to simply say, I'm proud of my county because they're taking steps not only to save money, taxes, and so forth, but because they're process-driven. They understand what the issues are, and they solve the issues. That's what I think could come out of this. But if you don't, uh, if you, d you disregard what I'm saying, I think you missed the boat, because I don't know when there will be another opportunity, as you've had this year, to address some of the fundamental things that could improve the state of Kootenai County. So, do I really want a government uh, a form of government? No. I want a well thought out substantive recommendations that will result in a county government that identifies and fixes issues, develops and employs an efficient problem solving staff, and has a living, breathing roadmap for the future for our county. Thank you. Charity, no last name. Everyone knows me, it's all good. <laughs> Go Charity! Okay. Good evening. I only get three minutes. That's, I can handle that. All right. First, everyone hasn't said stuff I want to say, so yay me. During the opening temper tantrum by the chairman, he called a lot of us some pretty despicable things. And it kept coming up over and over and over again, the way you conducted yourself, and just sitting there and watching you, and what came to mind was Psalms 1710, that they close up their callous hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. And I think that sums you up very well. And I think you should take the advice of some other gentlemen earlier and repent of your actions. And it wasn't just tonight, sir, it was many other nights as well. There was an analogy earlier about the turd, so I can't do an analogy because that took the cake. Um, and during your temper tantrum, you also, you implied or equated that having part-time, lower-paid people would somehow make them of greater um, character, that they wouldn't be devious in what they do. You would also like to change from three to five, and then also put an administrative role in there. This sounds like a school board. How many of us trust our school boards to not just do the bidding of their administrator that they've hired? That's all they do. The school boards don't run the schools. The administrators do. So that's what we're going to have in the county. The exact same setup. The ballot language is the key here. Someone, someone did rightly mention that it will be the voters who vote on it. But you can twist ballot language. And who's writing the ballot language? Oh, Brooks and Filios, not Duncan. She doesn't get a voice. It was in Lewiston, I believe, where they had wanted to change uh, a form of city government. They wanted a strong mayor because they had a council and they had a hired manager who called the shots. So they wanted to have a mayor. And the language on the ballot was so messed up that you had to vote no to get 
the mayor. That's the fear here. You're going to confuse the voters so that no one really knows what they're voting for. We're all telling you what we want. It will take courage for members of this panel, this study commission, to actually have a motion to have a new vote on what you're going to recommend. Does any of you have that courage? And then a second and then an actual vote? I doubt it. We'll see. Won't hold my breath. You, sir, owe the public an apology. Donna Pickering. Hello, um, my name is Donna Pickering and I live in Post Falls and I just want to um, say, just listening to everybody and especially the lady, I forget her name, my apologies, but she came up, she was the one with the mask and she said that, you know, people moving from other places coming here are wanting to destroy the peacefulness of the community here and I must say I'm very offended by that because I have moved a year ago from the tyranny of Portland, Oregon. And I tell you, it is, it is just such a breath of fresh air to feel the freedom that probably many Idahoans take for granted. But all you have to do is just go west. Just go west. All the progressives that want to make all these changes, go west. Because I tell you, you can live with all your changes exactly the way you want them to make. Because what's happening along the west coast of all those states and on the east coast is all these progressive ideas. And that's where you're going to end, is progressivism. And to make matters worse for this lady, I'm sure, um, not only did I move from the tyranny of Oregon, but my husband and I also moved from the socialist country north of you. And that was in 2000. And I tell you, you can just look at Canada, all of Canada. I tell you, it is horrible. And we have relatives there that would just love to come to some of the freedom here. But what we found, we moved to Oregon, and we were so pleased and happy. We were finally in the U.S., a free country, experiencing freedom. And then what happens to us? All this tyranny with Comrade Brown down there, um, making all these rules, and you, your freedom is suddenly starting to take away. And we realize, my gosh, we better get out of here and find somewhere free. And so we've come to the free state of Idaho. And my husband and I said, if we come here, we have to get involved with politics because we do not want our freedoms taken away yet again. So anyway, I, I say to all the Idahoans here, please, Continue to stand up, get involved, and protect your freedoms. And part of protecting your freedoms, especially when you come to a free state, is by keeping things the way they are. And don't be duped by this progressivism, because all it is is leads you down the path to what's happening on the West Coast, and it mirrors very much to communism. So please, keep the state free by keeping things the same. Thank you. Teresa Borenpol. My name is Teresa Borenpol, <clears throat> Dr. Teresa Borenpol, and I'm here from Post Falls. And I want to thank you for Could your... Could you remove the mask? I'm, I'm going to choose not to, but I b do believe I can hear myself echoing in. And can anybody on the screen let me know that you can hear me? Great. So thank you for your service to this committee and for the countless hours that you've spent discussing the opportunities we have as a community to provide for representation, effectiveness, and accountability. Your work has not gone unnoticed as I watch these proceedings while I've been here in this room, while I've watched them online, and while I've read recounts of your work on Thursday mornings. You've done the diligent work of studying our county government, 
engaging stakeholders. You've done a fantastic job of that, including tonight's engagement, so thank you. And presenting opportunities for our community. It's now time for the citizens of Kootenai County to take this heavy lift onto our own shoulders. I speak to you tonight as a Kootenai County and Post Falls citizen who is in favor of placing the following on the November ballot. Number one, moving from a three commissioner board to a five member board. And number two, hiring a county commissioner or county manager, excuse me. Here's why I would like to see these on the ballot. I trust voters. Tonight you've heard and are likely to hear that people don't want to hear or don't want what you've proposed. I would like to counter that the climate in North Idaho does not allow for many of my neighbors' voices to be heard. Throughout this process, there has been volume. There's volume in crude comments. There's volumes in folks looking for their 15 minutes of YouTube fame. There's volume on Telegram with group chats of demoralized citizens. Many of my friends and neighbors, coworkers and citizens do not feel comfortable to rise to this podium, to share where they live and to share their opinions as the decibels of sneers, jeers, and cheers erupt based upon adherence to an echo chamber. Engaging in government has become a full contact exercise in which voices with a minority opinion strong arm policy and an attempt to shoot democracy center mass. Democracy allows citizens to exchange ideas, to expand upon concepts, and to enact majority rule policy. We cannot let minority voices dissuade us from giving Kootenai County residents a voice, a vote. My vote speaks at the same decibel as every individual in this room. I ask you, for my neighbors who do not feel comfortable to be here tonight, to please include them in the process and place these initiatives, the culmination of your diligent work, on the ballot. The voices of the minority cannot be allowed to disarm democracy. Thank you all so very much. Jeff Lackey. My name is Jeff Lackey. I live in uh, Post Falls, Idaho. And uh, the term form of, optional form of government reminds me of someone from about 14 years ago. He was a community organizer who declared that he was going to fundamentally transform America. And while the constitutional conservatives slept, <clears throat> he and his cronies almost pulled it off. Came very close. But unfortunately for him, we the people have woke up from our slumber. From our slumber. I read somewhere that a little sleep and a little slumber and a sudden destruction comes. But now we are woke and we will not rest until we have won this battle. <clears throat> For there are many critical races to be won, and we will run to win and take back all the ground that has been stolen from us. And we will cancel this agenda and the agenda of Commissioner Falios and Commissioner Brooks that coincidentally started in, in, 20, in 21, Agenda 21. Thank you, and may the Lord God Almighty once again bless this Republic of the United States of America. Stephanie Wolf. So many of the fine patriots tonight have expressed thanks. People outside won't be able to hear you. People on YouTube, people on Zoom. If you could come up to the microphone. My name is Stephanie Wolf, and I was just going to say that so many fine patriots have expressed things that I was going to say tonight. So rather, 
then take time at this late hour, I will pass. <laughs> Connie Cutberth. Thank you. I'll keep this short. I'm surprised that this commission didn't come up with something for smaller government. It seems like everything is always for bigger government. The last thing we need is more government. And to the commissioners, especially as two um, gentlemen, I'm a retired manager from Simplot. And when we bought another uh, store, put another plant in, moved to another state, and expanded our responsibilities, we didn't go, get to go to our boss and say, oh, I can't do my job anymore. So you can vote yourself in a raise, and at the same time tell the voters that you can't do your job. Step up to the plate. If it works 50 hours a week, then work 50 hours a week. Do it. Average people that make $90,000 a year work those hours and you won't need additional help. So I'm very disappointed, I'm surprised they're not ashamed to come before the voters and say, we can't do our job, we need more help. I am not for any of these changes. I think our county is with the good the way it is. We just need to have our officials step up and do their jobs. Robert Pickering. Good evening. Thank you for the time to, to hear me. Um, much has already been said very eloquently, so I won't repeat much of what has been said other than to say, uh, I've got two things to say. Uh, first, I'm not in support of the... Uh, the change in the in the structure or the hiring of a commission manager. Um, I think it's incredulous that we would even be considering this increase of government body, especially in the time of inflation and unbelievable government overreach. Um, the people, the last thing we want is bigger government and positions with less or no accountability to us, the voters. Uh, I would encourage you to seek other available options that you have to you. And uh, the commissioners should know that if they continue on with this, we're going to work tirelessly to replace them in the end of their term. Yes. So the, the, the second thing I have to say, given the, the atmosphere tonight, um, and unfortunately my, my wife went before me, so she stole most of my thunder. Um, <laughs> But we are. We, we are naturalized citizens. We are desperately and deeply grateful to you, the American citizens, all of you, because this is the greatest nation in the world. Amen. We did move from Canada. And by the way, that's where the criminals are the only ones that have the guns. And we were basically chased out of there because if you disagree with the government, it doesn't go well for you. Then we moved to Oregon, beautiful spot, 2000. We used to take our three young daughters down to the waterfront for a Sunday or Saturday afternoon. You go down there now and you, you need your brain examined. My boss took his wife down there on a Sunday afternoon and she was uh, accosted. And they wanted to rape her right in front of, the, right in front of her husband. Yeah, welcome to the uh, progressive that uh, the left wants to bring. I'm sorry to say it's left and right. It just seems that way, but it's really morality and whether you are moral or immoral. So it's not left or right. So, um, and because I'm a newbie, uh, you know, I know I uh, have 
even tonight been accused of wanting to come here and burn the place down. Well, um, you know, as I said, we, we loved Oregon. And just in a short amount of time, they destroyed it. They absolutely destroyed it because of their allowance for anarchy and, as my wife said, Comrade Brown, because she, you want to stand for what's right there, you're the one that gets in trouble. So I just want to say to these people back here, because you're here defending what you know to be truth, and you need to continue to defend that. You need to get out to these meetings, and you, not, you, you cannot allow yourself to go back to sleep. And I know you weren't all asleep, but you can't be complacent. And I'm here to help row that boat with you. And I appreciate all of you and the ability to be a citizen of this great country. Robert Taylor. Well, I tell you, this has been one experience, and people have said everything I want to say. But I have a little bit more. This is a five to four vote BS. It was nine zero. You all know that. You set it up to be five four so that you can account, make it look like something. This is a deep swamp rat. You guys, if you even care about your children, your relatives, anybody, where you're leading, what you're leading into. We've got stereotyped, you got right, you got left. Let's take a look at that. How far do you go to the right? The Bible, it's as far as you can go. Left, come on, give me an answer. There isn't any. You keep going, you're going, you're going. You're not getting it. What you're about to do, and why are you even here? You had a 9-0 vote to come here, which is BS. Everybody wanted you out back months ago, not even bringing this forward. But you had to get brought forward. What's that tell all of us? It tells us you're all in a deep swamp, and this is really a bad, bad place for you to be. We have a groundswell here. We got people here that are all over the state, all over the country. It's a big groundswell. It's a groundswell of the Bible. You guys have got to wake up. Be for the people. Listen to the, all the people where they come from. Different states that are taken over. You, sir, you owe us all an apology. You started this rant by your little opening and calling us communists at the end of it. What was that all about? How dare you? The only communist I see is what's about to happen here. That's total communism. And this guy, this, you want to appoint. Why don't I come to your home? You guys give me your checkbook. All right? Let me handle it. Let me handle all of your checkbooks. I'll go out and, you know, who knows what I'm going to do. I don't know who's paying you guys, but you're in the pockets of somebody. All of you guys are. That's why it's power. You are looking for power. And that's not a good place to be. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You all got to sit down and take a look, a hard look at what you're doing to North Idaho, let alone Idaho. It's wrong what you're doing. And this guy Fauci that you want to hire, what is that all about? <laughs> what is that all about? A guy's going to run around and not be accounted for and do all kinds of weird things that we don't even know anything about? <clears throat> what is that all about? You know, you wasted your time by coming here tonight because you all know what you're going to do. This shouldn't even be on the ballot. Don't put it on. Is that why I'm not seeing anything? Yeah. 
What's the last name? McEnany? McAnally? Christy McAnally? Yeah, that'd probably be the best thing. You've checked for her and she's not responding? Okay. Nina Beasley? Good evening, my name is Nina Beasley and I'm a resident of Rathdrum. On March 1st, 2021, residents came to the Board of County Commissioners meeting where Commissioner Brooks gave his presentation on the bylaws for this study commission. When the meeting was over, another resident, Amy McCamley and I, went to Commissioner Brooks to discuss our concerns. At that time, he drew on a piece of paper and discussed with us that his idea was to have five commissioners and a county manager and that he used to be a county manager. On April 1st, 2021, the Kootenai County Republican Women's Federated had their monthly meeting and invited Commissioner Brooks to speak. President Carla Matari opened the discussion by displaying a photo of the commission manager flowchart pulled from Commissioner Brooks' website an hour earlier. Commissioner Brooks then stated that it is only one of many forms and he just wants a discussion about the forms of government. I spoke up and recited what he previously discussed with Amy McCamley and I, that his idea is to have five commissioners and a county manager. He denied saying that Bill Brooks has a pattern of not being honest. When Dan Green was interviewed by the study commission on July 7, 2021, he stated commissioners have too many meetings and not enough time to get everything done. If that is true, why haven't the commissioners hired a chief operating officer that can legally hire um, right now? We don't need a change in our current form of government. What we need is for Bill Brooks to resign. Why should the county have to be burdened and pay for his lack of good judgment and incompetence? Why are some individuals in this community and five members of this study commission jumping to such radical and extreme measures to change our current form of government when we haven't even exhausted all of our current options? Ada County has three commissioners and a chief operating officer and is successfully using that model. According to the testimony of Lori Thomas, who this commission interviewed on August 18, 2021, 44 counties in Idaho are operating under the same form of government. It works. Why do we want to take a choice away from our county commissioners to decide if they need a manager or not? Some commissioners may need or want the extra help and some may not. Another concern about having five commissioners and a county manager is that the manager will be able to make some decisions that normally the commissioners are required to make. We elected the county commissioners to make those decisions, not the manager. In the last public comment hearing for this study commission, 37 people expressed their desire that there be no change. Only one, Evan Koch, the chairman of the Democratic Party, expressed his support for a change. Evan Koch also stated when he was interviewed by the study commission on July 21st, 2021, that he thinks that there should be five commissioners so that they can discuss, and discuss things in secret. The vast majority of the testimonies from those who were interviewed by this study commission testified that a change would create significant hardships and most stated they do not believe we need a change. These are very competent individuals. The reasonable and wise choice is to not change our current form of government and for the Board of County Commissioners to adopt a Chief Operating Officer if they decide they need one. I also do think that we need to note that five, I would say potentially if they claim they're moderate Republicans on this study commission, as well as only two Democrats here, want this change. And I think they want a radical, extreme change. Why is it that they're the only ones that want this? And I think that that's a very important question to ask ourselves. Thank you. T.J. Farrell. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for sticking through this whole process. You guys, um, it's been a lot. 
I, I realize that. I was going to say something to you, Dave, but you've, I'm sure you're good. Um, well, I, first of all, secondly, I would like to um, say I'm sorry that so many conservatives didn't show up here. There's so many that I know that would like to but feel overwhelmed and have heard so many stories for what's been coming out of this group that they feel it's almost hopeless. And um, maybe they're right, maybe they're not. <clears throat> I think that a lot of this boils down to is we have a couple, one for sure commissioner who's incompetent, needs to be changed out, has an agenda that is not in our best interest. I'm in favor, before we go any further, of keeping things just the way they are. I, I know there's been, uh, each commissioner picked a person or two and then somebody in between who was supposed to be unbiased, and uh, here we are. Um, I don't see how, if each of you follow your marching orders, there's, we're going to have that split again. We you know, pretty much know who picked who and, and what the agenda is. It's, uh, it's, I don't know, it just seems like it's, uh, it's an uphill fight. The, the commissioners from the very beginning, two of the three, we were told, it, this whole thing is a trick. Two of the three were told, we were told they were, they were Republicans, that they were conservatives, that they had our same values, same value systems. And um, all of a sudden, a little while later, that doesn't seem to be the case. Not only do we not have the same value systems, they're totally against what almost every single person in this room has been saying. Isn't that interesting? And my next step is a leap, and it would be that those people pick people who are going to do what they're going to tell them to. One of the greatest things, Chris and I saw, I know you spent 100 hours. You went all over the country to cherry pick, to try to show us good things that we could do and be like someplace else. Yeah, I know you spent a lot of time on that. And when I saw it, I thought, boy, she sure spent a lot of time on that. And um, I've got an orchard, so cherry picking is tough. So I just thought that was an, an amazing thing you came up with. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I don't think this should even go to the election. I don't think this should even be voted on. If you listen to the people and not listen to somebody else who's giving you your marching orders, Everybody here, 99% of the folks that are here, you know what we want. We want things left the same. Not, Don't fix it. Our government is not in great shape right now. We, we, got, a, we got one cesspool. We don't need any more. So um, I'm just, thank you for listening to me. Brent Regan. I'm Brent Regan. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. First, I would like to thank the committee for their long efforts, the commission on their, their long efforts on this. I know what it's like to be in those chairs. I know what it's like to sit through endless hours of testimony, to hear angry residents. I know what a drain it is and an, an emotional burden. So thank you for that. I'd also like to thank you, Chairman and your housemate, Deborah Rose, because your initial introduction really showed everybody here the level of arrogance and contempt that you seem to have for the fine residents of Kootenay County. Um, I, it's palpable. And I got to say, we've been here before. Um, and I'm not talking about uh, Streamline. I'm talking about when we had the ULUC. And then we had commissioners who thought that the people of Kootenay County were too stupid and too dumb to put together a plan for the future. So we hired an expert to come in and tell us how to plan our community. And he came in here, spent a year and a million dollars coming up with a plan which was utter garbage. And all that was flushed down the drain. So we've kind of had our fill of having experts come in and tell us what to do. Now, I would like to point out this manager that you're proposing. I don't know if you've actually read the law on the manager, but one of the manager's responsibilities is to prepare and submit an annual budget for the county of 
to the Board of County Commissioners. The manager shall be the county budget officer and shall be responsible for the performance of the duties of the county budget uh, officers provided in the chapter. Okay? So here's the guy who's doing the budget. Guess what else he does? Exercise the executive authority of the county to appoint, supervise, suspend, and remove county personnel and make nominations and appointment to advisory boards and committees. The same guy that has monetary authority has authority over the people, the personnel in the county. Now, I may be just a stupid hick, but I'll tell you, if I wanted to design a corrupt system, that's where I'd start. Yeah. Now, I know it's in the code. I know it's in the code that says we can do that, but when these codes are generated, you got a couple of guys in the legislative office, oh, yeah, let's make them do this, this, and this. They don't think it out. They don't think it through. There's a reason 44 counties hasn't adopted a manager. That's it. If there isn't any other reason, that's the one there. You don't put that kind of power into one man's hands. Now, can the people of Kootenai County elect good people? Yeah, sometimes we get it wrong. Look at Commissioner Duncan, or Sheriff Bob Norris, or Clerk Jim Brannon or Treasurer Steve Mathis, these are good quality, top-notch people. So we have the capability to do it. We have that ability, and it can be done. Now, if you think that changing the form of government will fix the problems, then you probably think that, that curing diarrhea can be done by playing with the plumbing in the bathroom. <laughs> the problem, the problem of, with bad government isn't the structure, it's the people. When you put good people in a bad structure, they'll do good work. You put bad people in a good structure, they'll do bad work. That's simply the way it is, and it's been that way throughout time. We don't need this change. What we need to do is elect some decent county commissioners, like Leslie Duncan, who's shown that she can get the work done. Commissioner Brooks, who wants to do this, he testified before your committee that he's overwhelmed, he's not competent, he's not capable. Why should the guy who's not capable of doing the job tell you how to fix it? Exactly. Okay? This, this change isn't going to happen. This change, the only people that want it, well, the, the, my counterpart, the Democrat chairman of the, uh, of the Democrat party, testified, yeah, this is wonderful, we want this. You bet he does. This isn't going to happen. So the question for the county, and you're not going to change your mind. You're going to make your recommendation to the county commissioners. It's, it's baked in the cake. You're listening to what we're saying here. The county commissioners have a decision to make. Particularly Chris Filios has a decision to make. What does he want his legacy to be? Is he going to be, support this ill-fated thing? And his legacy is going to be the failure of that? Or is he going to say, listen, let's do this better interim step. Let's hire a county operations officer who will be the liaison to the department heads and see if that fixes it. We can give that, if that doesn't work, maybe we'll take another look then. But you don't need this radical change. You don't need this drastic change. Thank you very much for your time. Kelsey, uh, is the last name Helm? Helm. Helm. Thank you. Um, I'm actually going to read my husband's comments first because so many people already said what I wanted to say, and then I will get to anything of mine afterwards. Others have already brought up the danger of increasing the scope of government, which somehow always finds a way to continue to find reasons to increase scope or budget or both. So instead, I'll discuss the other complaint, that this is creating an appointed position. The question we should ask is, why do we care if a position is elected or appointed? From that, we can ask, what is the purpose of voting? Some people might respond saying that it is to ensure we get the best possible candidates to the positions. I disagree with that assessment as the government is, by design, meant to be inefficient and limited with many checks and balances in order to stave off tyranny. In fact, the intention is to make the worst case scenario as difficult to achieve as possible, rather than ensuring the best case scenario can happen as easily as possible. 
Clearly, this has wisdom, as the worst case scenario is far more likely to be achieved instead of the best case. Instead, voting is meant as a nonviolent method of removing corrupt and inept people from public offices. By creating an appointed position, you only need to convince three of five people to maintain corrupt or inept public officials instead of half of an entire county. This will continue to increase the risk of corrupt, ineffective, and tyrannical officials remaining in office when they should be removed. Take Fauci, for instance. The action of committee voting in favor to submit this proposal to the commissioners and the commissioners voting to add it to the ballot is an admission that those in favor prefer a system by which corruption and cronyism can more easily be allowed and will be harder to remove, regardless of how the public ultimately votes on the change of government proposal or what potential theoretical benefits might be possible under a new form of government. Those are my husband's comments. And I would just like to add that I refuse to give up my privilege to elect our sheriff. If he is not accountable, or she, if they are not accountable to we the people at the ballot box, then the office will become no more than a political placement for power, manipulation, and self-interest. And I have no faith in that kind of individual to stay true to, to the constitution of our state or our great country. We have far too many examples at the federal level, and sadly in Idaho, of politicians ignoring our constitution for the sake of selfish power mongering and pushing their own personal agenda at the expense of we the people. Stop increasing government. Stop increasing our taxes. Stop increasing bureaucracy. Thank you. The next name I have here is Matthew Hilm. I assume he has left. And, uh, Correct. Sharon Oldfield. Yes, first I'd like to thank the commission for all the hard work that you have done. And this study that I've been listening to, uh, the interviews that you did with the employees, I was impressed with uh, many of the employees of Kootenai County, and I'm um, really pleased that they were so honest about their uh, what they said to you in the interview, and none of them suggested that a change was necessary, at least that I heard. And uh, so I'm, I was blown away when, when you came and decided that you're going to take a look at uh, five commissioners and a, a manager, manager form a government, and I wasn't quite sure where that came from. But I'm new here, and I'm just getting started. But uh, I, I would like to uh, speak to your idea that uh, being responsible to the voter, that through somehow that uh, the electors, uh, the uh, voters elect you, and then you vote for something, and and we're supposed to accept that as. Uh, without without responsibility uh, to uh, to your decision, I, I think a direct voter. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you're directly accountable to the voter, and I, I think the three commissioners are directly accountable to the voters of the county, and that has been working very well. I, I see no reason for a change. But one thing that did come out with the, uh, from the commission study is that you have antiquated computers. And I think that's where the money, any money that you want to spend, could do well to uh, improve those, the computer system and help the employees that work for you and make it a, a more efficient. I, I really don't see... Any need for a change in your government? Mm -hmm. 
Justin Allen. A republic is a state in which supreme power is held by the people. To pledge allegiance to the flag is to take a solemn oath of allegiance or fidelity to the United States. To change our form of government to what has been proposed takes power out of the hands of the people of this republic. And it is in violation of the pledge that you guys made here tonight. We're getting screwed over, and we're pissed. This state and this country has so much to offer. But when the power is taken from the collective and put in the hands of the few, there corruption breeds and grows. When corruption takes hold, evil is hand to mouth feeding the growth of all other kinds of evil. My children will not bear the burden of my cowardice of not standing up against this evil. And if I must stand alone, God is my witness, I will. But the great thing about patriots, I won't be alone. And your names will not be forgotten for being the ones who usher in the evil. We must all be strong, steadfast in our duty to God and country. Do your part in keeping the power in the hands of the people as it was meant to be. We hold these, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, government are instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. But when a long line, long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, invests a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Cheryl, is it Tomgan? Hi, my name's Cheryl Dugan. Dugan, I apologize. That's, that's the way I wrote it. Um, we moved from Ground Zero, Santa Cruz, California, for Agenda 21, and just this summer. And one of the big reasons we moved here is because we camped here in March. And we loved it. And you could feel the conservatism in the air, and people were kind and nice to each other. Uh, it wasn't crazy. And when I heard about this uh, on the internet, this meeting, and read some of the things that you were planning to do, it frightened me. But one of the main things that frightened me was that you want to meet in secret. That's scary to me. It's, why do you want to meet in secret? What do you want to do that you don't want people to know about? Um, also, the taxes. If you hire more people, then you have to raise taxes. You also have to build, right, to accommodate more offices. If it's working, like so many people have said, please don't try to fix it. Thank you. Mike Birdsong.
Well, thank you very much. I, I don't think there's a whole lot I can add here that's not already been said. So I, I think maybe we just uh, take a look at the obvious. You know, uh, you've heard from a lot of people here tonight, this is a small fraction of the way uh, that people feel in the cement, uh, uh, sentiment of uh, Kootenai County. So but, uh, it, all, all I can do is maybe ask, do you folks actually see this? Is this actually uh, getting home to you? I mean, it was pretty hot in here. I think maybe it's because your asses were on fire. I'm just wondering if you're not so arrogant to realize your butts are on fire. I, I really hope they are. I really hope that you realize that and you take into consideration how we the people feel. Uh, you know, the, the arrogant stuff, and I've seen it in here before, really has to stop. You know, the Kootenai County is a very caring uh, uh, a county and people will work together. We all want to do what's right. But you folks work for us. It is, it's, you know, you, you we're your, we're your, uh, we're your employers. So hopefully you understand that. So like I said, there's not a whole lot I can add to. These fine people have done a great job. So hopefully you folks, that, that registers home with you. Not real optimistic about that. Rachel Ottison. It's Rochelle Ottison. I apologize. I'm glad that the Optional Forms of Tyranny Study Commission has not voted to remove elected positions from accountability to we the people. However, the recommendation to have a county manager and more county commissioners would grow our local government to larger proportions with more bureaucracy to deal with, more taxes coerced from the taxpayers, and an unelected official with authority over the budget. We do not need more and bigger government. More and bigger government is one of the largest problems in America and in the world. If some of the, count, the current county commissioners cannot handle the job, perhaps they should resign and let someone more competent handle it. Vote no to changes to Kootenai government. Norma White. Thank you, Chairman, for allowing me to speak. Um, my paperwork was lost in the back, and I got skipped over. So I appreciate the lady over here for giving it to you, and I appreciate you letting me speak. Um, first of all, well, secondly, I'd like to thank you for your snide, condescending, and disdainful opening statement. It clearly reveals the disdain you have for the citizens of this county. Um, did Chris Bulios write that for you? Because it sounded an awful lot like him. And uh, at the end, oh my gosh, you, you, uh, you sounded just like Joe Biden. <laughs> Second, let me say that I oppose changing our current government structure. Now, if Bill Brooks doesn't have the time, energy, or inclination to do his job, he can always resign. Bill's predecessor was a hardworking man who worked long hours for the people. Bob Bingham, another former commissioner, was in the office by 6 a.m. and worked hard for the people. Bill, on the other hand, spends many hours away from the office, attending political club meetings, taking long lunches. He was previously a frequent attendee of the History Club, which lasts two hours, maybe three sometimes, every week. Bill stated in the paper in 2019 that he wants more uh, commissioners and wants voting for most of them to be restricted to their districts, which would deny the voters the right to vote out commissioners they, commissioners they don't want. And that's, that's another tricky little thing that could be in here. What one lady said, the way it's written on the ballot so what if everybody isn't at large? And we have some communists from downtown Coeur d'Alene on the, on the board. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we already do. Um, but if we had three of them, how are we going to vote them out? I live in Athol. 
I wouldn't be able to get rid of those communists in the city that are controlling what I do, and I live in a rural area. You know why most people live in rural areas? Because they don't want to be controlled by control freaks. And that's what they want to change. Also, somebody else mentioned that a person stated to the Democrat Party that we cannot allow conservatives to take control of the BOCC again. They didn't mention his name. That was Chris Bielos. So why is this important? Because the commissioners steer the ship. They determine the rules, regulations, and ordinances. That's the most important thing they do. Oh, except they also appoint members of boards and commissions based on their ideology. Now, Bill and Chris want to hang him or hire a county manager who shares their ideology. Understand, the opposition to your recommendation is not limited to the people in this room. We represent thousands of other people who also oppose it, but they couldn't be here. And remember, Chris Filios has told us, I've come to a lot of meetings with Chris Filios in the room, he doesn't represent the people, he represents the state. That's misguided at best. Thank you. Kelly Levine. Hello, um, I am one of the newbies here, and so when I was listening to that other woman speak, um, I, I've had a totally different experience. Since I came to Idaho, my husband, my daughter, my grandsons, my son-in-law, we have all thought that it's been a wonderful place to be, and we all came here for one reason, and that was freedom. So I'm uh, in homes all the time during the week for my job, so I've talked to many people in the past year, Every single person that I've talked to, um, a lot of them are not from here, but we all talk about the same things. I have not run into one person who was like um, the other person who said they were afraid to come out here and say we needed bigger government or whatever. Um, <laughs> so I, I've had a totally different experience. Um, I've had a lot of jobs in my life, and one thing that I've heard during this meeting is we have to be professional. We want the county to be more professional, blah, blah, blah. I can't tell you how much I hate that word. When you're in a business, you've got power up here, and then you've got all the little minions down here. That's the professional world. That is not what we have here. We've got all the people down here who look like little minions but really have the power, and they are telling the people above what to do. It doesn't have to be professional. One of the people that just spoke said, you know, that government isn't made to be, you know, perfect. Maybe it's made to be messy. Maybe we're not supposed to be able to build it up and get all this power at the top. But one thing I know from being in business is that you don't throw money in people at problems. You figure out what the root is, you create better processes, and you get the right people in the right jobs. And we obviously don't have that here. So I'm... Um, requesting that you reconsider your vote and vote not to change the form of government in Idaho. David Hakendorf. How exciting. I'm up. All right. So I'm going to get straight to the point. The changes this commission has proposed are changes that you should not even be entertaining. This should not even be a point of discussion in the community at this time or even at all. The people of Kootenai County have no need for two extra commissioners and the additional costs that naturally come along with fabricating two extra unnecessary positions. In regards to the creating the position of a county manager, I'd like to remind you of a very important precedent. Ever since the founding of the United States, one of the most basic fundamental understandings is that the people must have their chosen representatives placed in positions of government. The idea that an appointed position should exist, not subject to the will of the people, but subject instead to no one but the two 
or three people who appointed him, has absolutely no basis in our founding principles. Thus, it is frankly rather disturbing that this is being seriously considered by this commission. In Federalist Paper 73, Alexander Hamilton writes that those who have the power over a man's support, also known as a salary or livelihood, also have power over his will. The second accounting manager is appointed by the commissioners, he immediately becomes loyal to those who appointed him, not to the people of Kootenai County. After all, if his job depends on making the commissioners happy and obeying their every beck and call, he will simply acquiesce to every demand, never pushing back against any foolish or detrimental orders put forth by the commissioners. Corruption can easily go unchecked by the people. And if we've learned anything from the past two years, those in government, and particularly those in unelected bureaucratic functions, do not always have the best interests of Americans in mind. We have also learned how incredibly vital it is to have good elected representatives in local government positions, because they are closest to the people and are supposed to be the most in tune with the wishes of the people. The second a new unelected position such as county manager is created, it virtually silences the voice of the people. And the overwhelming majority of people who have come to this meeting tonight are clearly concerned about this commission's proposals. And from what I've seen and heard, virtually everyone has strongly opposed it. So my fervent hope is that not one of you is going to sit there and completely disregard and blatantly ignore the will of the people. If the voice of the people has any bearing whatsoever on this commission, this proposal must by no means move forward and, in fact, should be dead in the water right now. Thank you. We don't follow Roberts here, so don't worry about it. It's in your bylaws. It's almost nine o'clock. Does anyone wish to take a break? Motion. Tamara, may I have permission to take a break? Just because I don't want one doesn't mean you can't have one. We're about halfway through. We have a motion. We have a second. Vote for a break. Anybody want a break? Okay, we've got three. You don't want breaks, the three of you? You're only halfway through. You're going to have no another four hours. Do it. Woo! Somebody else. Could you give us a courtesy, those of us who need to use the restroom? Sure. Thank you. Well, then. I guess I'm going to use the restroom. Yeah, but I said, if you just. You did, but you didn't vote for it, so we said if you did, that's my, that my not wanting to do it makes no difference for you. Five minutes. Yeah. If the line's short enough, certainly. If everybody's back. We'll reconvene at 9.05.
Was the time we were requested to reconvene? <laughs> Getting out of range, huh? huh? Getting out of range. Moving over. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't. I, I'm chatting. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Don Eichler, are you back yet? Don Eichler? Then he must have been here twice, I guess. James Osley? James Osley? Hello, James Osley. I'd like to thank the committee for this opportunity and putting up with a emotional uh, set of speakers. And I can't add any eloquent thoughts other than I would remind the committee and everyone here that contrary to a popular misconception, we're not operating under a democracy. We operate under a representative, constitutionally based republic. And that in spite of whatever personal opinions you may have, I would ask that you consider your role as a representative of the people of this county. And it seems clear to me that the people have made their position quite clear. And I would ask that if you are ambivalent to take the thoughts of the county into consideration. And it seems clear that we do not wish any change to the form or structure of the government that we currently have. And if anything, we would like to explore alternatives to improving the performance of the county operation without changing the actual structure or form. Thank you. Michael Burgess. Mr. Chairman, Michael Burgess, Post Please Falls. Please don't use that microphone. We've been told it's not functioning. I have an old man's voice, so if I sound like I'm yelling, maybe I'll get fired up and help, help out my own cause here. I stand in opposition to this proposal this plan ignores the foundational cause for what we now have. Maybe I missed the great news that this committee discovered that men are no longer flawed and changeable and free of flaws. We are now able to cast away all those cumbersome checks and balances. Free of flaws, we can, and direct accountability to the voters is now unnecessary. Well, why would you hide such an amazing discovery? It strains my imagination. In contrast to this work, some words uttered some 2,000 years ago and change slowly but radically changed the course of history for the better. The words did not change our flawed nature, and they didn't end abuse, but they changed the world, and they still do. And here's a small sample. In answer to, uh, in answer to the question we're all going to make, but Lord, when, when did I do this to you? Is coming his reply. So long as you did this to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Because of the gravity of the personage who speaks, a growing number of people, as like a ripple across the pond of history, started to make better choices more often in their behavior towards each other. From embracing these words sprang the growth of this thing that we now call Western civilization. From casting aside its demise, no amount of written statutes, codes, and ordinances can replace the efficiency of that love. Now recall, the founders of our nation, when they drew that fateful line in the sand against abuse, while contentiously drawing up a new kind of government, these men thought about each other's flaws as they hammered it out. They realized that ambition corrupted authority. 
They also conceded that good government needs leaders with ambition. What to do? So they did it by their method of checks and balances, even to the point, well, they did it by pitting ambition against each other, doing it by their method of checks and balances. And even to the point of preventing a tyranny of five to four majorities on serious matters. <clears throat> so what has happened to enable the elimination of direct accountability? What's changed? I see no evidence of the appreciation of these things. By design, the system that we have is supposed to be hard to get anything done. It's inefficient on purpose. Yet this inefficient system has had America stuck with organizing the world for over 100 years. I stand in opposition to this proposal. Julie Meyer. So I heard that you want three high paying, uh, three new high paying positions. However, tax taxpayers are already paying for your currently unfilled eighty two positions. Isn't that unbelievable? My suggestion is to fill those positions instead of making new ones. As a taxpayer, I want no changes. And as far as this new manager position, this is unbelievable. I moved here for freedom. And this is very upsetting. Please make no changes. Linda Aish. Hi, it's Linda Ashy. That's fine. You don't have to apologize. You are recommending three new high paying positions be added to your budget. You currently have taxpayers paying for 82 already budgeted positions that are still vacant. Cost is a major issue here for taxpayers. My suggestion would be to update the operating system. Fill these already budgeted positions and make it work. We are the people, your boss. And we want no changes. If you have been paid off, bribed, or threatened, I ask you to think about your children and your grandchildren. Thank you. Logan Meyer. All right. Well, my name is Logan Meyer. I've lived in Hauser my entire life. And as a young adult who's been in this state my entire life, I find it appalling that we're even thinking about this. Have we not thought of communism? We are literally moving towards it. It's a slippery slope. By trying to enact these policies and adding more government, we should be trying to shrink government. By making more government, we're just making bigger problems, and we're leading to a bigger chance of leading to just horrid issues that we can end up with by increasing government size. And if we think about it from the standpoint of, do you really want your future children to live in a communist state, much like the Soviet Union, Venezuela, or any of these other countries that are running right now? Well, I sure as heck don't. My kids, I, when I have kids, I want my kids to be in a just society. Because as a young man, I just, wanted my ki I just want to raise a family, build a business, and enjoy my life to the fullest. Thank you. Steve Kutcher, Kutcher, Steve has left. Let's go, Brandon. Ha ha ha.
Can we have a real name? No, that's not my real name. My real name is Jeremy Fuller, but you can't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> what you can take seriously is your responsibility to the citizens of Kootenai County. With those three words, accountability, transparency, and the hyphenated word, fiscal responsibility. Increasing the size of our government does none of those. So don't do it. Tina Peterson. Tina Peterson. I take it Tina has left. I'm not seeing any response. Carolyn Fuller. I want to start by saying thank you, all of you, for your faithfulness over the last many months that you've been gathering for all of these meetings as volunteers, which is really amazing to me. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe that you ever should have been formed as a committee because this idea has been rejected at least two times already. So why are we revisiting it again? In the meetings I've witnessed here, the vast majority of the audience appear through their cheering, clapping, signs, and comments to be saying no to taking away our ability to elect these officials, have a county manager, and add two commissioners. We have a representative constitutional republic. You serve us. You do what we ask. It's a government by us, the people, for us, the people. When the people say no, you're supposed to listen and act accordingly, which hasn't been happening very much in our area lately. The commissioners all ran as Republicans, although not all hold to that anymore, and Republicans value smaller government. Adding commissioners only makes the government bigger. Do what you said you would do and keep our government as small and directly to the people as possible. Please stop wasting the resources of our county in this effort. Don't waste money putting this on the ballot. I'm here to say no, I don't want any of these changes. Week after week, comment after comment, we are giving you our answer without having to take it to the ballot. I don't want to pay any more money in taxes to pay an unelected official that's going to have control of the budget and fund distribution with no accountability to me, the taxpayer. That would be setting up an opportunity for fraud. I don't want to pay more in taxes for the salaries of two additional commissioners just because some of our current ones think their job is too hard. Other counties our size function well with three commissioners. This is more salary, more office space, and more time spent vetting more candidates for us voters, for officers that are unnecessary here. I agree with our state constitution that originally identified the county government to be made up of three commissioners. I recognize that has changed now. Um, but I like that original form. And I definitely don't want my ability to vote for any of these elected officials to be taken away. If you think that we are too stupid to make good choices in elections, you live in the wrong country. My right to participate in government is precious to me. So in summary, I implore you not to recommend any change to the county government that currently exists. Thank you. Michelle, is it McCannage? Oh, wait, she just stepped She just stepped out in the hole? Just stepped outside for a cigarette. Maybe. Maybe. Well, she was leaving. Her timing was bad. She's trying to order pizza. Order pizza. Good idea. Good idea. I only got 20 bucks on me. <laughs> My name is Michelle Mackinich, and I am from Athol. Yeah, that's dead. That's dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Actually, if you push that one down, it'd probably be a better idea. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Twist it off. 
<laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, I am opposed to this bill because I am, I've been so upset with what I've seen the two commissioners, Filios and Brooks, do. Specifically in, I voted for Bill Brooks because he was a Republican and he sounded like a constitutionalist and he had me fooled. And then, oh my gosh, and then turning around and rescinding the Republican Party, he lied to us. Why would I trust a liar to vote for sheriff? Why would I trust a liar to vote for anything that would support me? And then Filios making the comments, calling us stupid, calling us ignorant. He obviously has disdain for us. He cares nothing about his constituents. So why would I trust him to vote for people? I don't trust our commissioners, and that's why I am against this. Thank you. Summer Bushnell. Well, I'd like to ask a question. I need to bring it up. Sorry. Because um, Brent mentioned the Title 31, Chapter 53, the Commissioner Manager, and that's where my concern is. I think this group's opening the county up to a lot of liability. Because it says, well, I'm not sure how to say this. Does the county manager that you guys want to recommend have the power under Idaho Code, the Section 7, says exercise the executive authority of the county to appoint, supervise, suspend, and remove county personnel. Does that mean that county manager can hire and fire people that are under the Board of County Commissioners? Because that means they could fire the second in command to the clerk if they don't like them, and you've just neutered all our elected officials. I don't like you, I'll get rid of all the staff that you like. That's not okay. And I guarantee you a lot of this audience would be part of a lawsuit for that. You really, really need to think that through. That's a huge lawsuit that this county does not need to waste time on. So you would have to be really clear. And then that's 300 employees they can hire or fire. I like that the sheriff hires and fires his people. The clerk hires and fires his people. You know, the treasurer hires and fires his people. And the board of commissioners stay with the budget. Because you've got to remember, this person is, they're over the budget. They can control 300 people. And how big's the budget? 108, 110 million, right? Okay. And I think what you did at the beginning was wrong. It makes it really hard for me to take you seriously, sir, when you were so showing a lot of nepotism and favoritism at the beginning. If I was in charge of this committee, my spouse would go last my spouse would know that. And it just makes it really hard for me to take you seriously with that. Because it's really hard for me to get out of my head, and I'm going to say something you probably won't like, but I'm just going to keep referring to you as Deborah Rose's boyfriend because you've lost all credibility. Honey Wheaton. Honey Wheaton? Yes. Hello, my name is Honey Wheaton. Um, I am new to Idaho since July. We too came here for freedom. And um, I've come to the place where I think there are really two sides. There, and I'm not talking about Republican versus Democrat. I'm not talking about liberals versus conservatives. I'm talking about good versus evil. I'm talking about freedom versus tyranny. And it concerns me because what I see here is what we're watching on a grander scale in our federal government. Right. And I hate to see that trickling down and robbing freedom here and there. I don't know any of you. I don't know who is for freedom and for goodness. I don't know who is for tyranny and has an evil agenda. But I will say this, the American people are waking up you can see that by the people who came here tonight. The more and more of us are waking up. There's still some who are asleep. 
but it won't be long. They'll be awake too and they'll see. They'll see what's happening here. They see what's happening in the federal government. And we begin to say, no more, no more. So which side will you be on? Will you be for tyranny? Will you be for freedom? Because I think you've probably already chosen that. And so I would appeal to you, I would appeal to your nature, please reach out for righteousness, reach out for goodness and for God and reject evil and reject tyranny, no matter what it costs you. Because in the end, the cost could be greater than you intend to pay. Whatever is happening behind closed doors will be brought into the light. It will not be hidden. God will shine his light on it, and you will be seen for who you are. So my appeal to you is take a step back. If you're that one on that path, take a step back. Rethink it. It's not too late. It's not too late to change your mind. Thank you very much. I believe it's Lucy Stark Walton. Yeah, you can just say Walton, that's fine. <laughs> My husband would love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucy Stark Walton, Washington, D.C. Uh, so, um, first I want to say that um, my family was a military family, and I lived in five different states uh, over the course of uh, the career. And um, Florida was one, um, California, Oregon, and Washington, the latest. And I'm now here, praise God. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what I love about here is nature. It's, it's to its fullest, and um, the people are the warmest. And um, I've really enjoyed that. Um, um, in the military, you learn that everybody, even friends, are family. So we really uh, embrace that. Um, one of the things, um, a friend of mine who I made friends with over the years that was an attorney said that um, the things we need to do is listen to everyone. Don't knock anybody out because they don't have the same ideas as you do. But doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. It just means listen. And, um, and one thing we can agree on, we all love our freedoms and the state of Idaho. I think that's true. Um, I, at this point, don't agree with, um, I think it's a real bad idea. I think it's very corrupt, even though there's probably people behind doing this commission that have good intentions. I like to think that in all situations, but let's face it right now, the way our countries are going, <laughs> our country's going uh, things aren't necessarily um, have good intentions when it comes to um, taking away our freedoms. And um, I like the idea that we can vote for our people. This makes me feel free, uh, free to choose who we want. Voting gives us the ability to get a comp competent people in office, we hope. You know? And if someone we vote for does not do their job, as President Trump would say, they're fired. Okay, vote them out. That's easy, it's easy. Um, so, let's see. Um, um, sure, thank you. Um, so, my question is, um, or I shouldn't say question, um, we'll be held um, accountable for the money that's being, who's, the money that's coming in for infrastructure, who's going to be, we're going to be held accountable for that money. So I imagine that's why they're getting that, this commission to come in and take care of, or uh, they want to, because they don't think we're doing a very good job. So let's just prove them wrong and fix what we already have going on. And then uh, the other thing is the redistrib redistricting, um, because uh, of these positions. And, you know, that word really has a lot of bad connotation right now because a lot of people um, have claimed that redistricting is done because of financial situations that they're bringing money in and they want to redistrict. But I think we could bring money in and take care of things without having to redo that and bring in other people's agendas. That's my thoughts.
Thank you. Doug, is the last name Belija? Yep. We'll leave close enough. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, uh, Doug Belija. Uh, we've had a lot of people come up here, chat with you guys. Been interesting. A lot of stuff that I believe in and a lot of points that they had on that. Thank you guys for being here and actually hearing us all out. I do appreciate that without cutting out the meeting. Um, I do have one question, and it was brought up about the Section 7 with the Idaho statute. Um, a couple people have mentioned it now. Uh, we're looking at right now that would the county manager actually be able to hire and fire the um, staff under the, the BOCC, uh, which is over 300 employees and a $108 million budget? Would they be able to do that? Yes? We're here to listen to the comments, not to answer questions. Okay, then it's a rhetorical question. Uh, the answer would be yes, they would be able to do that. Um, I know I was against Streamline when it was there before. Mike McDowell and I both filed about against it. Alice Rankin, uh, she had her husband fight against it previously before that, and she also advised me on uh, how this whole system works, and it was just really crazy how, you know, when she was explaining to me the corruption goes to totalitarian. I mean, we have them actually being able to appoint, be able to hire and fire and make recommendations. One person shouldn't have that much power, especially when it's not an elected official. Thank you. Kevin Heckendorf. Kevin? Thanks to everybody for being here. And uh, I think this is this, the third time now that I've been speaking to, uh, speaking to you guys, twice during the first public comment. And then now, once again, I do feel like it's a little bit of deja vu. Only this time we had four or 500 people here rather than the 100 or 200 people that we had last time. Um, you know, I, last time I prepared a statement, said what I wanted to say in an articulate, concise, and clear manner, but I realized after last time that we had a lot of articulate, concise, and clear points being brought up, we're still in the same situation again, in the same hearing, for the same public comments, just in a much louder volume, as one of my uh, friends over here wanted to say previously. She spoke to volume, but you know what? We're not hearing a bunch of volume just in decibels. We're hearing a volume of overwhelming opposition to what you guys are, are promoting and or what you guys are recommending to the commissioners to be putting on the ballot. Um, that's, that's a volume that was consistent from last time. You know, that, I believe there's one person that spoke up in favor of the, the recommendation to change the county government. This time I think there were three or four. It's basically 99% of people in overwhelming opposition to even allowing this to be put on the ballot. And I think it also, a lot of my friends here have been giving maybe a little bit too much credit to this body is a study commission because frankly, I do appreciate the time that you guys are putting into it. I think that there's some on the, on the body that probably do have altruistic uh, desires for this commission and regardless, it's a lot of hours that you guys have been spending. However, I think that we all need to remember that your job and the reason why you were appointed here is ultimately one, as a buffer between the county commissioners who really ought to be sitting here and listening to what we have to say, because we're the elected, uh, they are our re elected representatives and they should be the ones that are sitting here in your seats. I appreciate you guys being here, but this is not your job. You're here as a buffer though, because they appointed you to be here to rubber stamp a process rather than to do the actual job that you were even appointed to. Your job on this uh, study commission is to solicit information from the individuals that are impacted and then to solicit and determine the public opinion so that you can make a recommendation. We're giving this commission way too much credit for the authority that you don't have. Because frankly, the fact, the fact is, is that 
you've solicited information. All elected positions have said, look, I want to remain elected. We would like to be answerable to the people. And that's been the information that's been given to you. The public opinion is overwhelming opposition. So there's really nothing else that we needed to even get to this point to solicit more information and spend countless hundreds or thousands of collective hours spent tonight at this meeting in order to get to the same conclusion. You need to do your job, which is what you were appointed to do, as a buffer for the county commissioners and explain to them there is no public support, the elected positions want to remain elected, and that's the end of story. DOA, it should have been DOA after the last public comment. You had done your job at that point and we could have appreciated it as such. That's long gone, we're here again, we'll be here again with a few thousand people next time because it's gonna exponentially get more and more. The overwhelming majority says no, just say no, we like it the way that it is. Thank you. Dave, is the last name Siskel? <laughs> then I apologize. Siskel. My name is Dave Siskel. I live here in uh, Idaho. I've been a resident of Idaho a number of times. I'm a retired military officer. I'm a retired uh, aerospace corporation executive, and I'm a retired small business manufacturing business owner. Um, I really appreciate what's going on behind us, behind me, in front of you. Um, they've said a lot of things that I would like to say, that I wanted to say for a number of years, but as a military officer, you're not allowed to say those kinds of things. So you guys did a hell of a job. In all of my previous careers, I've dealt with different levels of government agencies, the federal level, state level, and local level. The last thing anybody that is not a government guy wants is more government. If you've ever tried to remove an uh, incompetent or uh, nefarious government person from a job, you know what I'm talking about. The last thing we need is more government. Um, people here said, well, there's 80, 80 positions. Uh, what's his name? Brooks, the guy that ran as a Republican, lied. Tell him, okay, this is your job. You tell him to fill those 80 positions and do his job or get the hell out. Matt Edwards. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I thank you, uh, like so many have, for, for uh, giving up your time over these past months to, uh, to engage with each other and with us. Uh, somebody was up here earlier, a EB, timestamp this, because somebody was up here earlier talking about, oh, uh, all people <clears throat> with all this volume just want to create a YouTube moment. Um, and, well, forgive me, but I'd like to create a YouTube moment, and I'll tell you why. Because the public, to the public, watching in this room and watching at home, I, I see that there was about 80 or 100 or so people still watching. Um, well, I want you all to watch how the media will play this in this town, okay? Because it's obvious, uh, judging upon Nina's comment where she said Brooks came to her and said, oh, I want five commissioners and a manager. And then we go through this whole thing about getting rid of the sheriff, elected position, and all that stuff. And then we go months and months and months. And where do we end up? Five commissioners and one county manager, just like what was planned out. So <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if, if all of this voice is going to get to you folks and you decide, you know what, let's just close up shop and go home and call it a day, which is what you should do. Um, but, uh, but let me go back to, to this because this isn't for you guys. Mark my words, folks, the CDA press, are they, are they here still? Were they here today? No. The CDA press was not in the room today? Somebody will tell them what to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I want you to watch how they play it. And this is why we show up 
This is why we clip out and we share information among each other, okay? Because the CDA press, if they don't report on what was going on tonight, we're on four hours of public testimony. Has this ever happened here? Yeah. Four hours of continuous public testimony where 99%, almost like the survival rate of COVID, 99% of the room <laughs> is opposed to this and has been from the beginning? Are you kidding me? And, and to the folks at home, I, man, to be on a Zoom call for four hours, I applaud you. I applaud you. It's easier to do it in the room because the energy is flowing, so I applaud those at home watching on Zoom. I'm telling you, how much time do I have? I'll use it all. Uh, <clears throat> watch the press all over the place. If they don't cover tonight, yet, yet this commission sends, sends the proposal on for five county managers, growing government, and an unelected county person like David Childs, who's only going to be holding to the globalist um, uh, uh, agendas that, that's been mentioned here tonight, which everybody always thinks is a conspiracy theory. Yeah, okay, whatever. That, that's fine. Uh, just watch. Watch how they spin it. They will spin this, and they will tell the uninformed voters how to act and how to vote. Yeah. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. So it is up to all of us yeah. to talk to our neighbors, yeah. and then the most important thing when this thing is on the ballot is to vote. We will overwhelm any fraud, anything, if we vote. You have to show up and vote, and you have to get people to turn in their absentee ballots and vote, because if we would have done that, then Joe Alfieri would have been mayor of Coeur d'Alene City. And so many other great things. Show up and vote, share these videos, share Nina's videos, share Ed's videos, share all of the people that are up here that I don't forget their names' videos. Clip them out and share them. We'll make them available. Uh, Evie's going to be on it, right? I just to put a lot of work in her, in her place. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I applaud you for showing up, for taking the heat. Uh, somebody mentioned that there's a lot of fire under these chairs tonight. You know, I, I don't envy your position, but I applaud you for being here. I, we're, we're all part of this community. It is all about unity. But by God, please save our existence here by allowing our governments to remain the same. I don't know if I mentioned that I was opposed to that. <laughs> Brian Smith. I'm not much of a public speaker, so I have this kind of typed out. My name is Brian Smith. I live here in Coeur d'Alene, and I oppose the changes moving from three full-time commissioners to a five part-time or full-time commissioners. I'm against the hiring of a county manager who would be appointed by an elite few versus the elected by the citizens. It is my understanding that the two of the three current county commissioners are pushing for this change. I've heard them say that they are struggling to keep up their workload. I suggest diligence and counsel in time management for Brooks and Filios, and or they just need to step down from their positions to let someone who can get the job done to fill their roles as commissioners. We, the citizens of North Idaho, need a reduction in taxes, not an increase. We want smaller government, not big government. We want citizens we the citizens want to elect our officials, and none of those important positions should be appointed. Thank you. Russ McLean. Just for fun, I've been sitting here. And just for fun, I've been sitting here. And I've been keeping tally. And with me speaking, that's three Idaho. We just beat out Canada by one. Okay? Remember that. Relationships. Important thing. I've worked for you. I've worked for you. Fish is getting invited to my daughter's wedding. I've known Chris Filios for 30 years. He's an honest man. <laughs> They don't know, I know him. 
We walk campaigns. We don't all, you know, it all boils down to Wolfinger, one of the most trusted men I know. When he says the best thing about a manager is that it will be legal before they go and pick up on something. Everything they'll do will be pre-vetted and save a pile of time. And you can like Wolfinger or not, but you can't say you can't trust him. And that's why I think, you know, you can keep the three, but you need a manager. And that's really all I got to say other than three Idaho, two Canadians, one Alaskan, and the rest Oregon, Washington, California. You know, so who the hell are they? Right? Citizens of the state now. Well, was I talking to you? Was I talking to you? I'll let you continue. So anyway, you guys, you worked hard. You know, I think uh, you just listen to Wolfinger. You know, he's a stand-up guy. And get a manager, keep the three, and take it from there. Okay? Bye. Wendy Smith. I'd like to open. Sorry, she said she didn't get an applause, so I was helping her out, helping him out. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to open with some quotes from Bill Brooks and Chris Filios. From the Optional Forms of Government, July 14th, 2021 meeting, in which they had an opportunity to speak and answer questions. And I dare say it will be clear after I read off their quotes that Chris Filios is not an honest man. Bill Brooks stated, three commissioners don't work well. I can't trade ideas with only three. Chris Filios, one of our commissioners said, I want a city manager who will be hired by the commissioners. Only commissioners have the skill set to hire this person, not voters. What an insult. I also heard Bill Brooks say about voters, this one is classic and well-known and oft-repeated, these people are chihuahuas with microphones, talking about the voters of Kootenai County. Our current commissioners, Brooks and Filios, have no respect for their constituents, and we know the study commission has been appointed by these three commissioners, Brooks, Filios, and Duncan. Two of them have no respect for the public, and one, Leslie Duncan, I think she's fairly known as a conservative in these parts. So you, as the study commission, I think we can determine already that if you were handpicked by these three, we already know what the majority is going to be and what the minority is going to be. I would say that the study commission from the beginning, and bless your hearts for putting in eight months and hundreds and hundreds of hours, I would say it was already corrupt from the very beginning. Tonight I heard that Bodding, Dave Bodding, you're Filios' treasurer? You, you and Filios together work together and yet you're the head? of this so-called honest study commission that's somehow going to come to a, you know, a conclusion. Dave Bodding, you should not be allowed to vote because you are not impartial. It is totally corrupt. Um, another quote by Filios exposes his need for increased power. Remember, this is all from the July 14th meeting. He said, right now, we have very little leverage. So he is pushing for more commissioners, bigger government, and a hired manager. Someone he will personally hire. True to his nature, Filios trashes voters in his next comment. He whined, if the manager is elected, how will we get a qualified individual do you think the public voters will do that? 30 seconds. Filios does not trust the voters because he knows we will vote his plan down. Filios and Brooks clearly struggle to keep up with their duties. 
When Joan, in the July 14th meeting, asked, the county has 40 new hired positions. Have these positions helped you? Bill Brooks said, we are treading water. No. Chris Filio said, it helps in the day-to-day, -day, but not in the long-range planning. Whatever that means. These two commissioners are unable to keep up in their duties, and they need to step down so other capable individuals can do the job. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's keep it that way. No to big government. No to hired officials. No to the corruption of Kootenai County. Thank you for listening. Kathy Heckendorf. Hi, I'm Kathy Heckendorf. I live in Coeur d'Alene. And first of all, I want to say I feel so amazingly blessed to live in the United States of America. It was founded by we the people. And lots of people have spoken here tonight more eloquently than I will speak. Um, some spoke in ways that I wouldn't speak because of who I am. But people are speaking with one voice except for four other people who spoke. And I don't know if you're just going through the motions here or if you're really listening to what the people have to say. We live in a representative government. So I have no desire to have the county change its current form of representative government, neither expanding the county board from three to five, nor having an appointed commissioner manager or county manager. There are 44 counties in Idaho, and all counties have three commissioners. Even a county larger than our Kootenai County has three commissioners. We don't need to expand to five. It's not warranted, nor is it fiscally responsible. Also, the appointment of a county manager is very concerning. Someone not voted in or able to be voted out goes against one of our basic principles of a constitutional republic. This person would have no accountability to the public and would be given control over the budget, which is now overseen by an auditor's office. This sole person would also be given the role of assigning advisory board members and such. The above reasons are reason is enough to reject this change. But since money is so often talked about, wanted, needed, used, it's also a concern for as taxpayers and what, um, how money is spent. The cost of this position, my understanding is, can be upwards of $163,000 per year. You've, you've heard the people. And I understand they've heard him more than once. And the fact that we can't dialogue is a little disappointing that a question can't be asked that just requires a one word answer, a yes or a no, or a yes there, or with conditions. We should be able to dialogue. That's what our founding fathers did. That's what they do in other situations. You're able to dialogue, not just give public comment. Um, so I respectfully request that Kootenai County Board of Commissioners and you as representing them, going back to them, reject moving forward on changing our local form of government here. Thank you. Linda Poots. Hello. Ooh, I have a loud voice, sorry. I know you guys are probably tired. I'm sure you did not expect about 350 people to show up, and neither did I. So I must admit I'm very excited. Um, as Sir Edmund Burke said, the only thing that evil needs in order to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Well, I think you see an audience full of good people who are here after we were four and a half hours doing something to protect our, our state, our North Idaho. The majority of us, yes, we are transplants. We are political refugees. And we came here because our state sunk. 
So when people are talking about um, that they want it in large government, that is exactly why all of us left. We love the conservatism here. We love local government here. Federal government, big government, they are threatening to everyone's quality of life as a republic and as free people under the Constitution. Local government is what protects us. That's why we need our sheriff to protect us from federal government overreach. We need you as our representatives to the county commissioners to say expanding government is not a good idea. When that one young lady said that um, the climate in North Idaho does not allow minority voices to be heard and that people wanted more, uh, that if more, if, excuse me, if people want more government or are afraid of the climate in Coeur d'Alene, they, they should, I feel that they should move just like we did. We all left our home states. We all left our homes, our families, our churches, our friends, our lifestyle, everything we knew because we wanted to come here for freedom. And we don't want to see that changed. For those who want that lifestyle, that oppression, the bigger government, there's Washington, California, Oregon, New York, plenty of places to choose. And they can leave for that lifestyle just like most of us left our homes to come for this lifestyle. This morning, several of us heard our treasurer, Steve Matheson, willing to sell out Idaho sovereignty for the sake of $186 per county, Kootenai County resident because our county needs ARPA money. He wants to receive the money so we don't have to increase taxes, yet you are willing to hire more commissioners and a county manager which is going to require more money and more taxes for, the, for um, that government to survive. Thank you. I just want to say if you look at the wide range of people that are here with the same exact message, look how many came here for freedom. We've got people that are bikers. We've got people that are farmers, so to speak. We've got people that are sophisticated. We've got people that are terrified up here to speak because they've never been involved. And we all have the same message. We would just thank you if you would please reconsider your vote and let Brooks and Filios know that we do not want to change our government. Thank you. Tom Basenko. Good evening, Tom Basenko from Athol. I'm opposed to uh, changing our current county government. I'm opposed to the alternate forms of government that have been proposed. I do support keeping our elected officials, the coroner, the prosecuting attorney, the clerk, the assessor, the treasurer, but most importantly, the sheriff. And he is the highest ranking law enforcement officer here in the county. Elected officials have the ability to have autonomy from the board of commissioners. Oftentimes, commissioners don't like that autonomy, but it is a valued point for elected officials. Elected officials work for the people, and they are accountable to the people through the election process. If they aren't doing their job, they can either be unelected at the end of their term, or they can go through a recall process. Appointed officials work for the appointing authority, in this particular case, the BOCC, I oppose a commissioner manager. City commissioners and, city man and county managers hold a lot of power. Oftentimes, the commissioners and other officials depend on that manager's support. And if it isn't there, a particular agenda item fails. The appointed department heads, if, there is a, if they speak out, they can be subject to budget cuts, and other forms of retaliation. So oftentimes, especially during the budget process, they may sit quiet as mice in the audience, even though they may not concur with a proposed budget matter. This should all be done by the county commissioners. I do not support adding a county manager or other support staff because it continues to grow, costs taxpayers money, and asks for more tax dollars. This having a, an election is also costly, and I do not support that either. Thank you very much.
John Hyatt. Hello, I'm John Hyatt. Got a very unique experience. And three minutes will probably not allow me to say all that I need to say. First, I'd like to see how many people here have ever worked for a government. How many people have ever worked for two or three governments? <coughs> worked for a city and a county? I have. Who's been involved in lawsuits? Who's done them themselves? And didn't have a lawyer? I have. I've been a department director head in charge of millions of dollars in a budget. Now, currently the way the proposal is for adding additional commissioners but they want to be able to add additional commissioners and a new administrator. I've worked for probably 10 city administrators. If they're wanting to add additional ones, then their salary should go down. Typical, the cities that I work for, the city councilman got paid $500 a month. So they want to be able to get an additional city manager or a county manager and still keep their salary and have additional salaries. That's unacceptable. Now, if I want to sell you a car for $1,000, you probably won't look at it. But if I have a million dollar car and it's used, you'll want to take it to a mechanic to find out all you can about it. What the commissioners existing have not done, they have not revealed everything. When I had budgets, the budgets that I had and worked with always presented to the city manager, the city manager was always under the, the city council. I had to account for everything, everything in those cities. How many gallons of gasoline I used and what the price of gas was. The price of gas would say it was $2.50, that's what I budgeted for, because I knew about how many gallons I would do. Didn't use the same amount of vehicles, same amount of guys. The price of gas went up, I had to go back, ask for more money to the city council. They had it down to a nickel for everything I had to add, had for a budget. That's not being seen with the city, with the current county budgets. They don't produce everything. They have basically general line items. You need to see all the things that are going on. There's a lot of waste in every city, every county. I've seen it, what I will, will tell you, I don't know these commissioners personally, probably about four or five of the councilmen, I've probably had about 15 different councilmen, four or five councilmen, they've gone to jail. They do different things, they do a lot of the illegal things. <coughs> I am against the current way they're trying to do it right now. What you've had, one commissioner that's already said, I can't do the job, because what he's saying is the job is too much or he is incompetent. That's, that's fine, but then that what he's saying is there needs to be more people. When you hire a professional manager who's got at least a bachelor's or a master's degree, they know how to do it. I can, I can tell you what, if you have a good budget, you can do it, but you gotta know how to be able to use budgets. You gotta be able to read budget and ask the right questions. If you don't ask the right questions, they'll go on. So they're, they're proposing something that you don't like because it's gonna raise taxes. So say, let's get two more city council members Lower their salaries, $500 a month, $1,000 a month, but yet you want to have a professional manager who's got a master's or bachelor's degree, he knows how to do it. That would work. But as is right now, you've probably got to be able to negotiate. Remember, old money hall, let's make a deal. Right now, they're proposing a deal, there's no counter offer. So, what you need, you've got to be able to have, know the right questions to ask. If I was a lawyer, remember, a lawyer, when they approach you in court, they only ask questions that they know you can't answer. So who, he who asks the right question wins the debate. So they're proposing one thing and they're gonna win. Obviously they're gonna win. So you gotta be able to come back and say, no, 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 we don't want that. We want what we can. We don't want taxes to go up. No one does. I'm absolute constitutionalist, 100%. But we have to do what is right. Both sides, staff, where's, the, where's this, any staff members here? As I said, I've been over 20 years working for city Five cities, one county, one school district. The higher up you go, the bigger, the deeper the swamp. Do we have a swamp here in the county? Absolutely. Do we, the swamp gets bigger in the state, bigger in the federal government. Do we have an absolute broken system in the, in the county courts, state courts, and federal courts? They're all broken because you can't get to it. With a county commissioner, if they hire a manager, there's an absolute, you go read, read the law, they have what's called a at will position, but they get around that. Oh, let's have a three or five year contract. Oh, gee, you're at will, so first day everything goes right. Oh, the council, they fire you. 
you still get five years full pay. Make that a one-year contract or less. Then it would work. But right now, city managers everywhere, they have complete and absolute control unless the council comes after them. I've, I've seen most of the time the, the managers are very competent professional people. Sometimes the councils are not. Sorry. This brings an end to the public comments. I have been uh, admonished that we skipped over the approval of the minutes. So if everyone up here has had a chance to look at the minutes for uh, January 12th, do we have any issues, questions? I move we approve them. We have the motion and the second. Call for the vote. Approve. The minutes are approved. Schedule for future meetings. We will meet next Wednesday to discuss what we've heard tonight. Depending on what happens on next Wednesday, January 26th, if we meet on the 2nd, we will only have half the room. This half of the room is already uh, committed. We will be meeting down there. February 9th and 16th uh, will also be up in the air as to what happens on the 26th. So well, with that. No, this will not be a public comment question session. Do we ha are we ready to adjourn? We have motion to adjourn. Second. We have a second. Call for a vote. We are adjourned.